We help fund, build, and localize tech startups in the world's most promising regions. Cinefy is a one-stop solution for tech companies trying to make sense of China and Southeast Asia. Check out more at cinefy.group. This planet is at a tipping point. The headlines seem to agree. In fact, it might be the only thing we can agree on. We seem to be caught in the same old pattern of booms and busts, haves and have-nots. Pushed to the brink by COVID-19, we find ourselves more divided than ever. And despite staggering sums of money being printed, many continue to struggle. We simply can't afford to wait for the pattern to repeat itself. Today, people are choosing open platforms powered by blockchains ensuring money flows through the hands of everyday people. Institutional investors are getting engaged. A new Bitcoin wave of global so institutions are investing in Bitcoin and blockchain technology, while demand for cryptocurrencies has reached historic heights, forever changing the way we give to the causes we care about and how we exchange, earn, and spend. The future is decentralized. The world is moving forward. We're building new systems to increase the freedom of money for everyone. But it'll take all of us working together to push past the tipping point. We have a Binance Smart Chain that's finally released a $100 million fund for the Binance Smart Chain ecosystem community. I, I think that Bitcoin is the solution to 7.8 billion people's problems. They just don't know it yet. We can watch the world change, or we can change the world. Welcome to the Theta Network. Earn T-Fuel crypto rewards simply by watching live streams and videos. As you watch and share with others, you're contributing to the decentralized Theta Network, all powered by Theta's native blockchain. Discover the future of video delivery at thetanetwork.org.
May 7, 2020. Free time was created by 13 big validator companies from all over the world. A completely decentralized world created by the power of community. Free time has never had any particular owner. It doesn't have an ICO. All funds from the givers serve as the reward for the useful and important for the network actions via competition-based contest. Free time got very big partners. After having engaged 1,000 partners, Freetown will have 1 billion of users. Do you want to become part of that? You can. Enter the contests. Offer your contests to the community. Engage partners with big audience. Or just buy tokens and take part in staking. Are you ready to join the decentralized world? We are waiting for you. XIP ecosystem is designed to decentralize the internet and overcome monopolistic control over domain names and top-level domains. A blockchain DNS solution where agnostic NFTs preferred by you identifies your domain and top-level domain. XIP token is an agnostic usage and governance token released initially based on the Binance chain. Except tokens will be used to buy, sell and auction domains at top-level domains, while token holders will get staked when domains and TLDs are purchased and auctioned. Uh, hello, dear participants and viewers of Synopsis 2021 Edition 3. Uh, my name is Maxim Sukhanosik, and I'm a CEO of Linger Group and Coindar.org. So today I'm the host of the summit. Uh, today's agenda includes a panel discussion about NFTs. Uh, its moderator is Georges Serafima Semkina. Uh, she is a CEO at DAO.tv and a crypto advisor. So. Uh, as you know, Synopsis 2021 offers full immersion in the digital economy, DeFi, and NFT. Uh, our official streaming partner today is Sira TV. Uh, as soon as tomorrow, Zeta Drop will start a mystery box auction of exclusive Synopsis NFTs. Don't miss it, guys. Yeah, it's, it's going to be amazing. Uh, these tokens are collaboration between the Zeta Labs team and Ellen Bell, the official artist of our summit. Synopsis will also issue special edition NFTs tied to the official merchandise and our official drink, Court of Royal Rum. Synopsis is organized by the International Blockchain Consultancy Calibre Group, the leading cryptocurrency calendar, Coindar.org, and Sinafi Group. So, summit so organizers are the Commission of Blockchain Technology and Digital Economy of All Russian Public Organization Investment Russia and popular YouTube channel Cryptos and Sexy BDC. I would like to thank our diamond sponsor who contributed a lot to holding this event. Algorand and Arpa Chain are among the world's largest DeFi and MPC companies. Gold sponsors made no less of a contribution. They are Gazer, 
Bell Protocol, CPI Technologies, Biconomy, and Veracity. We send special thanks to our friends, our partners who also put a lot of efforts to make Synopsys happen. There are Exmo, Zeta Network, and Zeta TV, of course, <laughs> uh, Freeton and Ton Labs, Delio, Voxer, PR.io, Astar, DigiDAO, DAO.vc, Bean Crypto, Bing Bond, J2TX, Trustbase, Gate.io, and of course, Binance. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's get started. Today's first speaker is Anthony Blackburn, CMO at Vyot. Hi, Anthony. Hello, everybody. This is Anthony Blackburn the Chief Marketing Officer for Viot. Last time that you saw me here was earlier this year. Um, I was actually the Marketing Manager. So um, yeah, my name is Anthony Blackburn. Uh, I wanna give a special thank you to Synopsys for seeing me again um, so that I can speak about Viot and all of the new and exciting things that we are, uh, that we're working on uh, right now. So let's get into it. Uh, this, uh, this session will be a little bit shorter than the last one. Last time we went for 45 minutes, it was a full intro to Viot. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on the Synopsys uh, YouTube page. Uh, but for now, we're going to do a little bit of an update and then we're gonna get into our broker, which is actually launching very soon. Uh, we actually, I have a few surprises for you guys. So let's get into it. So here's Viot. Viot is leading, so I'm going to give actually a brief, um, a brief introduction and a brief overview of what Viot does, and then I will go straight into our, um, our most recent development. So Viot is leading businesses into the new global digital landscape with intelligent virtual assistants and intelligent contracts for business and legal services. So what does that mean? Basically, the reason why Viot started is because we felt that there was a big issue with the traditional legal system and the traditional uh, business landscape where things take too long. Um, we really haven't caught up to the, the digital landscape. You know, we're still using faxes, we're still using traditional mail, we're still using email, which sometimes is okay, sometimes it's not. Um, but what we wanna do and what our goal was, was to create a virtual assistant that could help specifically uh, business related activities and legal related activities. So think of like a pocket lawyer or a pocket uh, business assistant. So I will skip through these. So I'll just give you guys a second to read this in case you want to pause. Um, these are the problems and the solutions that we kind of uh, address and want to tackle at Viat. So, okay, let's get into it. Viat Intelligence Services. So here are our three business lines. So first, our first business line is the merchant. It is an AI driven sales assistant. It can help with intelligent shopping. Um, the, the goal of the merchant is to, when you're at home, when you're trying to do your online shopping, we know that the landscape still hasn't, um, it still hasn't gone back to normal. And a lot of people now after the lockdowns and after all of that, people do now kind of prefer to do their shopping online. You know, the e-commerce market has exploded and that's why we're here. We're here to help you with that. So now you have your, your CSA or your customer service representative uh, that, is, that is now available at your fingertips, either at your computer or even on your phone. And what you can do is you can actually have that human touch by having a conversation with our intelligent assistant, and it will help you get intelligent offers, do price comparisons, find the products that you need without having to scroll through endless pages, without having to you know, go in the search bar and hope that what you search is what you're looking for, because sometimes that's not always the case. And what adds a little bit of uh, extra um, value uh, in going through our AI assistant is that it will learn based on the habits of the customers, based on the goals of the customers, every single time there's an interaction, every single time there's a conversation, it'll get smarter and smarter, and it will start to understand, predict, help you 
find your what you're looking for even better. So um, that's the beautiful thing about AI is it never stops improving. And the other beautiful thing about AI is it only gets better and better with time. So uh, alongside the human touch, you also get instant transactions and our AI sales assistant was actually designed as a white label solution. So you don't have to have the Viot assistant on your website necessarily. You can actually have your own assistant. So you can, you can rebrand the assistant as you see fit. All of our solutions are tailor-made. So if you have a specific goal in mind, if you have something specific that you want to, to do, and it doesn't always have to be shopping, right? This sales assistant can be uh, an aggregator of sorts for other things. Uh, we can actually tailor make this solution for you. So pardon my pop-ups. Um, so basically, uh, we will move on, sorry, to the broker, uh, which is an AI-driven uh, crypto protection broker and aggregator, which is our second business line. And funny enough, we'll get into it more later because this is actually on our roadmap, um, something that we are delivering as we speak. So this is very, very exciting. And uh, so what is the broker? What is the digital protection, digital asset protection platform? It is a multi-service B2C platform that acts as an aggregator of personal digital asset protection services. I know that that's a mouthful. I know that it sounds like a lot, but to, to, to really keep it simple, to be, to be brief about it, you have crypto, you have digital assets, and you need to protect them. Most people right now are putting in hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Some of you may have even done very well in this bull run. And maybe you're sitting on millions of dollars worth of digital assets, crypto, tokens, coins, whatever you want to call them. And most people are unprotected right now. And you need to start thinking about protecting your digital assets before something happens. And this is not any type of scare attack. This isn't anything like that. You know, if you had a car, you would want to insure it. If you had a house, you would want to insure it. If you had anything value, you would valuable, you would want to insure it. So why not your digital assets? In this landscape, it's very common for exchanges to be hacked. You know, centralized exchanges, even, even the big ones have been hacked. I won't name any names, but you know, even at the, the most secure, you know, most retail friendly uh, point, uh, you, you have, sometimes these things happen, right? Sometimes a bad contract, sometimes it's something that's even out of your control. Sometimes the market uh, is, you know, it's incredibly volatile. Sometimes the market crashes. Um, it does happen. It has happened before. You want protection against that. So what our broker does is takes you through a conversational flow. So you can have a conversation with it, either text or voice, and it will actually guide you, educate you along the way and find the right protection for you from our list of vetted and audited service providers. So all of our service providers have been audited. They all have to have proof of funds. They've all been vetted by the buyout team. So what you're getting is you are getting a premium service, a premium uh, digital asset protection. Um, some might call it insurance. We don't call it insurance. They don't call it insurance. It doesn't really work like that in the crypto space. Um, so we call it digital asset protection. Um, and how it works is we guide you to the right, um, the right protection for you. You get the protection. And uh, from there, you're set, you're protected, which is great. And what's really important to emphasize, I mentioned that this is also an education platform. So along the way, you will learn about why or how you may be vulnerable. And so if you have a conversation with our AI broker and aggregator, and you don't realize, oh my goodness, I'm actually, I was going to get protection for this. I actually am exposed to this as well. Well, now you know, and thanks to our assistant, you can actually go through and get that as well. In the future versions, we will definitely go, um, we will definitely have intelligent policy uh, contract generation. Right now, we will be making referrals to our trusted providers, but in the future, we will be adding more and more features. Now, our flagship product, the legal assistant, this is why it all started. It was all about having a pocket lawyer, all about having something that's a little bit more accessible, a little bit more affordable, faster um, in terms of uh, legal coverage and contracts. 
you know, this is this is really the meat. This is the 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 penultimate um, kind of goal of of Viat is to produce this AI legal assistant, and it is our third business line. So, what does it offer? It offers the intelligent generation of enforceable traditional contracts and intelligent contracts on chain. And what is an intelligent contract? You may ask. It is. It sounds like smart contract. It is not the same thing. <clears throat> what an intelligent contract is, is an AI enhanced version of a smart contract. So basically what you can do is you can have a conversation with our assistant over text or voice, and you can begin to have contracts generated on the spot. And we will start with you know, basic agreements, basic service agreements, basic exchange of good agreements. That will be the MVP version. But with time, uh, as we continue to progress the technology, we will be able to deliver enforceable contracts on chain that can actually trigger based on whether uh, a commitment is made or not, um, whether goods have been exchanged or not, which adds more security and more transparency to the space, right? Contracts in the space currently do not exist. Fortunately, we are actually bringing them to the blockchain space. But what's even more important is even in the traditional space, it is actually possible for us to deliver contracts, traditional contracts or on-chain contracts. So what that means is that when it comes to legitimacy, when it comes to actually a project being able to get a service provider that promises to deliver something, but maybe they are decentralized. Well, now you can have this intelligent contract in place. And what happens is once those certain actions are met, it triggers the payment, which is fantastic, right? And that's just one of many different use cases that our intelligent contracts will offer. In a future version, we will also have intelligent contract analysis. And now this is going to be, um, this is going to be uh, one of those developments that continually gets better over time, improves over time. We do have a buyout network of law firms, lawyers, legal professionals that are helping us expand our, our intelligent contracts, helping us train our AI to understand how the components of a, of a contract works, how this all works. Um, it will take some time to get to the contract analysis point where we can basically take a look at a contract, um, you know, by region, assess the validity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what we can do right out of the gate is actually deliver, um, we can actually deliver uh, the analysis of, let's say, an application. We're actually working on a use case with the Canadian immigration market where we will be assessing very specific applications for visas. So that's actually very exciting. We haven't announced it yet, but we are working with a, a new law firm uh, based out of uh, a new law firm in our ecosystem based out of uh, based out of Toronto, Ontario. So more news about that to come in uh, potentially as early as October. We will see. If not October, it will definitely be sometime in Q4, and we will have a lot of exciting news for you regarding that. So other than that, the legal assistant will also help for streamlining internal business processes. It'll help with uh, real-time negotiation of civil contracts. So for example, with one of our partners, Milk, we will actually be delivering um, once we, once our assistant is is prepared for it, we will actually be delivering a negotiation tool as well as policy generation for their licensing policies. Moving on, oh, we got a little graphic here. Yep, there's the merchant, there's the broker and the legal assistant, but actually the broker, we have a, a new and improved broker that you'll see pretty soon. So again, basically, you know, what we offer is you know, business on your time, 24-7, 365 accessibility. You're not restricted by nine to five hours. You're not restricted by service hours. You have the assistant all the time and at an unlimited capacity, in theory. Protecting business and customer. It, blockchain is secure. Our blockchain is secure. We are fully audited. And because it's on blockchain, it is immutable. It cannot be manipulated, which is fantastic for businesses. Intelligent shopping, as I mentioned before, will help you with your e-commerce. It'll help you shop. It'll help you select products intelligently and find the things that you want a little bit better. Full control over your business. Well, now you don't have to necessarily rely 
on a law firm on retainer. You don't necessarily have to rely on somebody to deliver something. You now have the assistant at your fingertips that you're able to take advantage of. It's faster and smarter contracts that you can rely on. Intelligent contracts, an enhanced version of smart contracts that our team designed specifically for you, that you can design specifically for yourself. And you can set the terms of the contract, which is really important, right? A lot of, a lot of people know that, you know, devs are very expensive. This type of stuff is very, very costly. And with intelligent contracts, you can do it with a simple conversation. Intuitive use. Well, we are, so we started as a joint proof of concept with IBM, actually. And we since have leveraged uh, the leading AI technology. So we have leveraged a little bit of Luis, a little bit of GPT-3. We've learned a lot. And with the natural user interface that we've been taking advantage of, we have the best in conversational AI. So you're getting an intelligent, easy to use, and um, an intuitive uh, software. Cutting costs and streamlining internal processes. I believe that this will be probably the biggest selling point for us with a lot of larger businesses. You know, when you have uh, a large amount of employees um, that are doing tasks that are not optimizing their time, well, that really hurts, right? If you can give them a tool like an intelligent assistant, uh, it immediately gives them a tool that optimizes their time, increases profitability, and cuts the cost of, you know, necessarily bringing on more staff unnecessarily, right? So now we will get into the, the, the via customer flow. I'll leave it here for a moment. You can pause if you want to take a look at it, but this is just one of the many user flows that we can do. This is a simple user flow. We actually produce tailor-made user flows for each of our clients. Powered by IBM Watson, as I mentioned, we started as a joint proof of concept with IBM. We are built on IBM Watson, um, but we also take advantage, as I said, of other um, intelligent uh, technologies and AI technologies. So I'm going to leave this here as well, just for the sake of time. You can pause it if you'd like to look at it, but this is a little bit of an explanation on how we connect businesses and consumers and help foster that relationship. Here again is our technology, which again, we will be migrating to Cosmos in Q4. Our main event is in Q4. We are well on our way to that. It is very exciting to have our own proprietary blockchain. Currently, our token is available on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. We do have staking. We do have liquidity pools on both. Okay, so let's get into, okay, here's the buy token. So as you can see, this is the kind of the image of our buy token. It is a very special part of our project. It is the very first VFA regulated digital asset. And what does that mean? It means that it's the first federally regulated digital asset by the government of Malta, which is also known as Blockchain Island. So that may not sound exciting to some, but it is very, very exciting because now you were taking a digital asset, we're taking a token, we're taking a cryptocurrency, and we are bringing it into the potential institutional and corporate uh, space. We're offering something that is more safe, more secure. We are, we are audited several times a year. Our team is audited. Our project is audited, our token, our contracts, everything is audited. So you're getting a safer and more secure option as a digital asset, which is going to be crucial, crucial to investors, especially down the line. We're in a, we're in a time right now where, you know, NFTs and, you know, a lot of things are very popular and maybe something like this um, is a, a little bit underappreciated, but having a regulated token um, going through the entire regulatory process is a very special thing. And what a lot of people don't realize and what a lot of projects don't realize is that our project is actually paving the way for future blockchain projects to pursue regulatory framework, to, to actually, um, when regulations do kind of get cracked down, when governments and countries begin to crack down, which it's already happening, you know, they will look for guidance. They will look for a, a way to do this. And we are actually creating the, the, the legal framework for this. We're creating the legal framework for the future of blockchain. It's very important. A special thank you goes out to Grant Thornton, one of our partners. We partnered with them at the beginning and they actually helped us become the first out of over 350 projects to actually be approved uh, to be regulated by the Maltese government. So we are confidently, I can say, we are number one when it comes to this stuff. We are at the forefront of 
crypto and blockchain regulation. Corporate clients. I don't know why there is no picture here. There we go. There it is. Super bizarre. One of our corporate clients. So uh, Super Bazaar is a very large retailer out of Belgium, and we will be applying our AI sales assistant to Supra Bazaar. This is an ongoing process. This is something that we hope to fully implement um, by either the end of Q4, at worst, the end of Q1 2021. Some of it is depending on us, and some of it is depending on Supra Bazaar. Um, but this is our first corporate client. We are very proud of it, and we want to give a big thank you to Super Bazaar uh, for investing in us. Now to the broker, new and exciting things. So I did give you a brief description of the AI broker and aggregator. So I will, um, I will actually, so you can see that he's been reworked. He's been remodeled a little bit. He's looking a little bit more uh, handsome, I guess you could say. Well, technically he doesn't have a gender, but uh, you know, uh, he uh, or she is, is looking you know, proper and has a nice tie, has a shield, has his tokens that are being protected. Uh, let's get into uh, the intro to our broker platform. Let's see if this will play. Oh. Forgive me, I'm trying to get it to play. Let's see if I can get it to play. Okay, try this again. All right. Hmm. Okay, it is not working, so give me one moment and I will actually pull it up on another source. All right. Okay, so let's move over to right here. All right, and let's begin. We're Viat, and this is our broker for blockchain. He's the genie that will listen to your needs and will keep your tokens safe. By combining artificial intelligence and blockchain, Viat offers advanced solutions to make complex problems simple. And with our broker, you can acquire insurance for your DeFi experience as easily as having a conversation, in the world of cryptocurrency, it's hard to tell the good from the bad, and you don't want to take a gamble with your portfolio. So sit back and ask yourself, in this digital financial landscape, am I protected? It's time to take back control of your digital assets. Whether it's to protect your wallet or tokens on an exchange, or as a hedge against market volatility, our broker will help you find the smart and personalized coverage that's perfect for you. To achieve this, our broker will show you a vast marketplace where you can browse insurance options and products without any bias or transactional context. Thanks to advanced AI algorithms, Viat makes this process fast, easy and affordable. Just tell our broker your needs and the genie will take care of the rest. The broker aggregates personalized services across a range of leading insurance providers to build a policy tailor-made for your DeFi experience. Our genie will help you make the right choice. With Viat's intelligent contracts, your policies and claims will be secured on the blockchain with a paper-like agreement for your digital and physical records, along with verification through a digital signature, QR code, or certification. With us, your tokens are safe. And when it's time to resolve your claim, our broker has your back. Simply make all claims through Viat's platform for a smooth and quick resolution of claims. Viat, intelligent services, just say the word. And there you go. So that is one video that I will show you. Uh, that is actually the, the premiere technically of our, uh, of our broker. So I will just jump back into our presentation. And now we get into the, here we are. So yeah, so the broker, an AI driven solution that uses our AI assistance interface to allow for the aggregation of products and services and distributes them to consumers through highly personalized offers and recommendations. 
Viot will also allow customers to buy a variety of services, including, for example, car or travel insurance. Thanks to the AI virtual assistant, Viot will be able to support purchase decisions and sales processes, creating a brand new service distribution channel. So as mentioned, this will also be an insurance broker and aggregator for traditional insurance, we hope someday. We do not want to limit ourselves just to blockchain, but of course we are starting with crypto protection, crypto cover. Um, it is very important to us and to stay true to our blockchain foundations and make sure that that is something that we, we, we showcase, we feature. So this is just a snippet of the new landing page that we will have. So we were actually going to have a full new website just for the digital asset protection platform uh, and the broker. It'll give you information about the different types of protection. It'll give you information about our partners, support, everything that you may need will be on this page. And so this is just a snippet. It's not quite finished yet. We haven't put in the actual artwork or the actual images yet, but it is a little bit of an exciting thing to take a look at because uh, a lot of people have been waiting for us patiently and we're very excited to, to be able to deliver this. And so now I have another video. It's not working in my presentation, but I will pull it up uh, again on the, on the web browser to, to show you guys what this looks like. Okay, here we are. So I won't play the whole thing. Actually, I will play the whole thing. I will play the whole thing. This is our use case video. Um, this will give you an idea of exactly how our, uh, our product will look at the very end. So, you know, this, this will give you Hello. a good idea. Hello, it's good to have process, you here. I'd love like. to know what I can help you with. I would like to buy some car insurance. I would be happy to help you with your request. Do you have ownership of the vehicle? No, I want to buy a new car tomorrow. Congratulations. To get started, I'll need your driver's license and registration number. Do you have the new keeper slip for your registration certificate? Yes, I do. Could you please scan your new keeper slip? The Ministry of Transportation database shows the vehicle description below. Is this information correct? Yes. Will you be the owner and registered keeper of the vehicle? Yes. How do you use the vehicle? Social and commute. How many miles do you drive the vehicle per year? About 12,000 miles. Thank you. Could you please scan your driver's license? Here. Thank you. I have gathered the following information. Is this information correct? Yes. For how many years have you had your license? 14 years. Do you have any additional qualifications such as Pass Plus or an advanced driving test? Pass Plus. Do you have any medical conditions or disabilities that the DVLA needs to be notified of? No. Could you elaborate on your relationship status? Do you have any children under the age of 16? Yes, I'm married and have two kids. What is your profession? I'm a carpenter. Have you had any accidents, claims, or losses in the last five years? Yes. Please tell me when the event took place. Were there any insurance claims regarding that event? Did it affect your no-claim discount? It was on January 1, 2020. There was no claim, and it didn't affect my no-claims discount. Good to hear that it didn't affect your no-claim discount. Were there any other accidents, claims, or losses in the last five years? No. Have you committed any driving offenses or had any fixed penalty notices in the last three years? No. Thank you. So, when would you like your car insurance to start? Tomorrow. Would you like to add any other drivers beside yourself? No. Okay, great. What type of coverage do you need? Comprehensive. I can also offer you some optional coverage possibilities. Are there any that you would like to add? Breakdown cover and confirm selection. Great, got it. How much voluntary excess are you prepared to pay in case of a claim? 250 pounds. How many years of no claims discount do you have? 11 years. And how would you like to pay? You can make a single yearly payment or pay in monthly installments. I would like top pay in monthly installments. Thank you. It seems I have everything I need. This is all the data I obtained from you. Could you check if it's all correct? This is correct. Super. I have prepared three coverage offers. 
My recommendation would be to go for the one which costs £218 per month, as it covers everything we just discussed. Show me more details. Here you go. Closes the details. Would you like to purchase this offer, get some more details, or see other options? I want to buy this insurance. Great. If you pay for your first month now, you can begin your coverage tomorrow. How would you like to pay? By MasterCard. Please confirm your payment. Thanks. I'm processing your payment. For your convenience, I've also generated an intelligent contract as part of your insurance policy. It acts as your digital account for this policy and is permanently stored on the Viat blockchain. I've sent a traditional contract of the insurance policy to your email. Please make sure to store it safely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Your coverage starts tomorrow. Because you used Vayat, you'll also receive a payback bonus of 20 Vayat tokens. Have a great day. If you need anything else, just say the word. And there you have it. So that is our um, that is our use case video for the uh, the broker. So one thing that you will notice is that the broker itself actually um, oops, just spoiled the surprise. Uh, the broker itself um, can't even pronounce Viot, but uh, you know we're working on it. The conversational AI is you know a funny thing; <laughs> can't pronounce its own name. Um, but we're actually going to be uh, releasing some pretty funny content surrounding that uh, soon. But yeah, so that is an idea of what it will look like. It's highly flexible. You'll notice that it was paid in in, in pounds, so you'll be able to also pay in crypto in our native Vi token, and you'll be able to get a discount on. Uh, on products and services via our payback program, which essentially takes the, the amount that you paid and gives you a kickback uh, based on that, which is really exciting because you're gonna get the lowest prices possible for your insurance or crypto protection uh, uh, products, which is fantastic. So now let's get into the next fun part. Our $5,000 broker bug bounty. So you can test the broker with our broker bug bounty uh, program and you can win buy tokens. So how do you do that? Well, I'm going to have to actually show you uh, because it is not in this presentation. So I will actually go directly to our website again. Sorry for all the changeovers, but it is what must be done. So here we are. We are on the Viot website, as you can see www.viot.ai. You can see it is a very nice, shiny new website. And if you scroll down just a little bit past our use cases, you can actually see that our latest update is that our beta testing round two is now live. And so what you can do is you can actually click on test beta. And right here, you can actually request to uh, access the, the beta. Uh, we will have this uh, beta testing access open for a few weeks. Um, so be sure to check out our website. If you don't end up making it, it is okay. We do have a, uh, we do have a, a landing page as well. If you don't make the beta access, then you can actually go to viat.ai slash en slash broker slash broker for blockchain. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but hopefully you can pause and type that in. Uh, the genie is waiting to protect your tokens. You can actually click and get early access um, to our, our broker platform when it is live, uh, which is very exciting. So be sure to do that. If you are a broker, you can click on this little broker page. It will take you to a very similar page, but specifically for uh, crypto protection providers. So let's wrap this up. I will go full screen again and scroll through. Apologies again for the, these delays. I am not a PowerPoint expert by any means, clearly. Uh, so the last thing that I will show you guys is our global team of professionals. Um, we have a team of over 20 people, including a dev team of more than 10 people now. So um, we do have a lot of dev power. We do have a lot of uh, dev resource and we feel very confident in our roadmap in our milestones we have achieved a lot including a demo flow for a few different uh, uh use cases which i unfortunately can't reveal 
here, but you will see this month actually that one of our products will come out, which is really exciting and we'll be doing testing for it uh, uh, as well. So not only the broker, but we have a couple of other products that we will be releasing in Q4. So it's very exciting stuff for our VIA tiers and our VIA community. Not to mention our great partnership ecosystem that you can check out on viat.ai. And here is our info. Thank you very much. One last note, I want everybody to go to the Viat website. I want everybody to go into the Telegram channel, say hello to our team, go follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on Medium. We are putting out some of the best content in the space. We're putting out two articles a week. You're putting out a weekly brief. We are giving you weekly updates on our project. We are always in our Telegram channel. You get to speak directly with the core team. You even get to speak with the C-levels like myself, the CMO. You get to speak with our COO, uh, Pavel Andruskevich, and other members of the team. If you ever have a question, send us a message, ask a question in there. We're very friendly. We're very welcoming. We love everything. We love positivity. We love criticism. This is what we're all about. We, we're here to grow. We are a solutions provider. And uh, and without problems, you can't have solutions, right? So we would love for you guys to, to come in. We'd love for you guys to, to chat with us. Tell us what you think we, we should do next, what you would love to see us do. And, uh, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. We'll be happy to speak with you about it at length. Uh, we do have a few cool things coming up. We do have a Viat Talk series that is coming up. We just got the brand new equipment for that. It'll be featuring myself. So I will be speaking on more issues surrounding the DeFi space, surrounding Viat, everything. Uh, and those will be coming out on YouTube. Check out our YouTube page. We do have some Meet Viat episodes where we have, you can meet our team. You can get to know us a little bit more in depth. We really are uh, a fun team. We're a global team. We're all around the world. Um, you know, we have a lot of fun. I recently, I was actually in Poland visiting some of the team members, um, great group of people, um, you know, people that you want to really support and, and, and talk to, you know, a lot of great minds. So I want to say uh, a special thank you again to the Synopsis team for inviting us back. We are so excited to be back. We can't wait for the next one. We hope that you guys come check us out. We hope that you guys sign up for beta testing. And uh, and that's everything for Viat for this, uh, for this session. So thank you guys very much. Take care and stay safe. Today, advancements in technology make all kinds of services more accessible, faster, and a whole lot cheaper. With Viat, interactions between individual customers and businesses get even easier thanks to intelligent contracts. By using advanced artificial intelligence and blockchain, Viat creates a new quality in accessing services and concluding agreements between people anywhere in the world. Viat is like your personal assistant providing legal services such as intelligently creating custom contracts tailored to your needs. These are both printable, traditional written contracts, as well as digital, securely stored on the blockchain. With Viat, creating a contract is as easy as talking. Hi Viat, I need a contract for my new employee. Hello Jane, sure, I'll just need a few details. Shall we proceed? But that's not all. Viat also introduces brand new intelligent service distribution channels that empower businesses to adapt to modern customers by offering new ways of accessing services. In this way, enterprises and customers both benefit. It's a win-win situation. Oh, and did we mention that everything Viat does for you is made secure by blockchain technology? Viat. Intelligent services. Just say the word.
Welcome to the Theta Network. Earn T-Fuel crypto rewards simply by watching live streams and videos. As you watch and share with others, you're contributing to the decentralized Theta Network, all powered by Theta's native blockchain. Discover the future of video delivery at thetanetwork.org. The global economy is in a state of flux. Technological changes happen at the drop of a beat, with adoption of innovations accelerating at unprecedented rates, steadily increasing the rhythm of our daily lives and demanding a new cadence in which we live, work and invest. Blockchain technology offers a new paradigm in sharing information while improving cybersecurity, scaling efficiencies and creating value. As the world's largest digital assets exchange, OKEX helped to shape the future of this exciting market, helping you to make sense of the dynamic flows of information and developments, connecting you with the most relevant market opportunities. In a world of fast-paced technological change, OKEX is defining blockchain, redefining markets, and offering more options to traders. It's okay to be more resolute. It's okay to be more daring. OKEX. XIP ecosystem is designed to decentralize the internet and overcome monopolistic control over domain names and top-level domains. A blockchain DNS solution where agnostic NFTs preferred by you identifies your domain and top-level domain. XIP token is an agnostic usage and governance token released initially based on the Binance chain. Except tokens will be used to buy, sell and auction domains at top-level domains, while token holders will get staked when domains and TLDs are purchased and auctioned. So the summit continues and the next speaker will perform Shashi Megavarna, founder and CEO at Axie. Shashi, you word. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, XIP project. Uh, XIP is about a decentralized internet governed by the community. Uh, so uh, this is this project has been uh, uh, operated by Mobilotech Blockchain Corp. And uh, we are going to solve some major issues that we are facing in the current internet, right? So if you are considering the current internet, so when we are for our day-to-day -day life, when we are buying uh, domains and uh, when we need day-to-day -day life, some uh, uh, domains for our businesses and uh, other things, right? So what are the current issues that we are having with the current internet, right? So none of us know that both domains and TLDs are controlled and seizable by ICANN and INA. Just imagine if you are hardly worked, uh, uh, business uh, website has been vanished from the internet overnight. Or if your country level domain has been vanished from the internet. So that means that your country will be leading onto a sort of a uh, financial crisis, like your stock markets won't work, the particular country's aviation systems work, won't work, likewise. And the second thing is we are paying for our websites, uh, I mean, the domain names yearly just because of we have rented our websites through domain name registrars. And these registrants, uh, these registrars have the ownership of your domains and 
TLDs. And even ordinary people or small business organizations, startups, right? So we cannot have our own TLD, which will give you uh, more uniqueness for your business, right? When you are reaching out to your customers and the community. So we identified these things has to be changed and those are issues that we are having for the moment. So what is the, what is the solution for this? The solution should be because ICANN and IANA is having this much of sensor, uh, censored power because of their centralized DNS. So the solution should be DNS system has to decentralize through blockchain and we have to get our ownership of our domains and the particular countries, organizations of uh, anywhere should have the ownership of uh, their TLDs and domains. So what, what is the solution offered by XCP is XCP introducing a decentralized agnostic blockchain based domain name system, which is run by the community, right? So, and even current situation that we are not able to transfer our uh, domains at very easy way because it's hell lot of paperwork is involved in there, right? So in XCP that we are giving you the option of having an NFT, right? We identify your domain or a TLD through a NFT, right? And you will be provided full control and ownership just only for a lifetime fee, right? And the, to access these decentralized uh, domains and TLDs, XIP will provide you a browser, browser extension, and these browser and browser extension will enable you to uh, access decentralized domains and TLDs where you can purchase through uh, XIP plus decentralized uh, centralized domains and TLDs which you are having for the moment even. So what is the business model or revenue model of the XIP? Actually XIP domain and TLDs that we have uh, XIP uh, DNS and DRS which is our uh, domain reservation system and the domain name system and even where people can auction your premium domains and TLDs, that is called an exit auction platform, and exit token, uh, uh, which is uh, which I am uh, going to explain you from the, in the next slides, right? So this is the business model and the revenue model that we have with exit. And if you are considering the domain market for the moment, that usually, as per the Google data, six hundred and ninety-two domains are issue into the internet per minute, right? So our business model that our revenue model, we are focusing only on uh, six uh, virgin registrations only this out of the 692 domains, 66 virgin uh, registrations are coming and renewals uh, and uh, virgin registrations and re-register, uh, uh, sorry, registrations and uh, re-registrations are going to be the rest. And we are talking about a 6.5 billion USD market. And in the internet, we do have 1,514 TLDs for the moment, 5, 363.5 domains in the market. So what XIP is doing is XIP going to eliminate these renewals and re-registrations through our ecosystem. So the most important part, why we are having a token, uh, XIP token here, right? So we do have 2.1 million total to token supply to the market where 1.19% <clears throat> is going to be pre-sale and IEO 4.76. Uh, initial DEX offering is going to get 4.76 of the total supply and <clears throat> rest will be for the exchange listing team, uh, promotional token offering and liquidity pool and advisors and marketing. So we are allocating our funds actually to <clears throat> 15% for the administrative and general, and for the security, we are allocating 5%, and marketing and community, we are allocating 40%, and product development and research, we will be allocating 30%, and reserve fund will be 10%. So what will be the benefit for the EXIP token holders is, right, EXIP is an agnostic blockchain model, right, The where the governance part will be of the uh, entire ecosystem, will lies with the EXIP token holders. And initially we are issuing our 2.1 million tokens in Binance chain.
and this exim token holders will get stake when domains and tlds are purchased and auctioned right 19% of the whatever the domain or a tld price will be staked among 2.1 million stake holders and the dns system that we are running is uh, which is called nodes right so when domains and tlds get purchased so even this do uh, 19% of the whatever the price of the TLD or a token will be staked to the to the nodes. And so when we are considering the competitors that we do have in the market for the moment, like uh, we have identified ENS, Handshake, Namecoin, Unstoppable Domains, those projects, right? When it consider when you consider the price uh, factor of these things, right? So exit will be starting from one dollar to hundred dollar which is bearable by any person in the world right so this is uh, the competitor analysis that i'm not going to explain that much but when you are comparing to the tld issue ones these some of these projects are allowing you to uh, create your uh, uh, domains under given tlds and somebody doesn't allow right the token utility nobody is taking uh, uh tokens when you people are buying and selling decentralized domains right <clears throat> and this governance we exit is the only decentralized project that exists in the world which is truly decentralized and governed by the community right so we are the people only because if you concern ens they are supporting only ethereum which we really appreciate Ethereum and we really love it. And hand, Handshake is a uh, sort of a using proof of work uh, in the same way as Bitcoin. And Namecoin is all the fork of Bitcoin. And Unstoppable Domains, for the moment, they are supporting only Ethereum. But we are an agnostic model, which is currently supporting Ethereum, Binance Chain, and Stellar for the moment. And these token holders can vote for adding new uh, chains to the uh, system in the future. And uh, <clears throat> the marketing strategy that we are using for the moment is content marketing, paid advertising. And I don't have to explain that much about the marketing strategies to the crypto arena because we all know how the marketing strategies of the crypto arena will work. And expanding community and advisors, which is very important for a project, right? So we are still in the first stage. and. Uh, we will be definitely expanding our community and advisors and getting into the partnerships. So we do have current partnerships for the moment and we are expecting to expand these partnerships in the future uh, when we are growing up, right? So what we have achieved for the moment is actually our domain reservation system already live where people can reserve your domains and TLDs and have your NFT in whatever the uh, chain that you want. For the moment, uh, it is uh, we have only offered Ethereum Binance Chain and uh, Stellar. And our browser extension is live. We have launched it and we are expecting uh, the uh, IO is conducting for the moment. And complete, we have completed our private sale with 100% success uh, through some venture capitalists and some high network individuals, right? And static website hosting will be <clears throat> live. And uh, uh, we have presented uh, Synopsis 2021 earlier also. I'm really grateful to uh, present uh, Synopsis. And um, EXIP Ambassador Program is live. We have ambassadors from Africa, Indonesia, China, Russia, and many more will come in the uh, next few months. So what is our future plan is go for a better IDO and some good exchange listings where we have already approved by some top tier exchanges. But for the moment, we are working uh, highly focusing on our product and sooner we will be launching that and the community run dns server which will be coming on uh, within few weeks and the browser will be uh, available by next year and uh, expanding the team ambassadors kols and um, uh, ad, uh, ambassadors and advisors where accelerator programs have already approached us and we are working on that and um, uh, appointing domain and TLD sales agents like domain registrars, right? Getting partnered with them like Namecheap, uh, GoDaddy, or those kind of people who are appointed by ICANN Aina. Hopefully, we are uh, trying to uh, get partnered with some good companies 
to make our uh, domains and TLDs more popular and more accessible for the community, right? So this team will be led by uh, me actually and uh, Shomilan, and uh, this team is actually coming from uh, multinational uh, backgrounds, and some of people has uh, uh, won uh, some awards for their platforms like Nifron. Uh, co-founder is there, Shermilan, and the co-founder of Nifrom, uh, the other co-founder is uh, Chaji is there. They have won the global awards and uh, yeah, recently they have uh, uh, selected for the global startups awards and they are going to uh, represent that uh, in the upcoming month. And we have the ambassadors, as I say, Africa, Indonesia, China, Russia, and I think into, uh, Indonesia, yeah, Indonesia is also here. China is also here. So uh, there are so many ambassadors and advisors will be joining in the future. And strategic partnerships that we do have uh, for the moment is actually uh, CrowdCreate, as you all know, one of the world best uh, marketing agency and Faster Capital. Uh, they have uh, included us on their race uh, capital uh, program to uh, get us 1 million USD worth of investment and Nifron APN consultants there are so many partnerships are coming. So I'm inviting you all investors, please come and have a look at uh, about our project and um, be a part of our project because we have only 2.1 million tokens out there. So we will be glad to have you there and we are inviting you to join our uh, all the social media networks, uh, Telegram, Twitter and everywhere. So stay tuned with us. We are trying to change the internet and get the real independence of the internet. Thank you very much, guys. One of the main problems of the proof of stake protocol is the enormous harm caused by the environment. Gazer Network is a company that offers fully eco-friendly coal mining. So the next speaker is Rajav Jarad, CEO at Gazer Network. Hi, Maxine. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be back. I hope you're doing well. And uh, yeah, let's uh, talk about Gather and what's going on. It's uh, been, a, been a while, I think, since we've spoken about what's been going on. Uh, since we last spoke or given an update, there's uh, quite a few things that have been going on. Here's a quick re recap of what Gather is, what we do, and you know how we were born. About three and a half years ago, um, Gather was born with a simple idea to provide publishers and applications and alternative form of monetization. Uh, we had a seed round over three years ago, which is about $300,000. And now where we are, it's, it's a very different pace and a very different Gather, if you will. Gather right now is a multi-layered ecosystem, which con consists of Gather Online, Gather Enterprise, and Gather Cloud. Gather Online uh, is the alternative form of monetization for publishers and applications, which uses end users' spare compute power. So when you go to a website, let's say reddit.com, and you provide your consent, i.e. you say, yes, I, uh, I'm okay with providing my spare computing power. That computing power is used to secure the Gather blockchain and in return the publisher and you as a user earn uh, revenue or cryptocurrency, right? That's what Gather Online is. It provides publishers, applications, another way to make money without having to rely on really intrusive ads, uh, which no one really likes at the end of the day, right? If we talk about Gather Enterprise, Gather Enterprise is a sub-brand, which is uh, built out to help all these incubation projects and people building on the Gather Layer 1 chain and Layer 2 when it's ready. Uh, so we help them with development, we help them with marketing, we help them with enterprise services or hand-holding, if you will. It's a very small sub-brand and very niche uh, kind of service that we provide to these uh, child chains, if you will, or incubies. Uh, and that's going quite well. And it's also geared to some of the cloud, cloud customer enterprises, also as a sales arm. So I'll come back to Gather Enterprise when I talk a little more about child chains and what's going on over there that's very exciting and it's been a lot of updates going on there and uh, gather cloud one of our uh you know large uh, attractions for gather is a decentralized uh, cloud computing platform right which includes storage and compute uh we have two services which are running right now on the private uh, uh private version or private cloud which is a file transfer service and a runtime environment we have internal demos going on and we're uh, pitching clients right now including you know the existing clients that we have with us we're going to them being like hey it's time to, you know it's ready, we want you to come try it out, et cetera. 
And these are two services that we're offering to them right now for feedback, et cetera. And we're developing further services as we go along with feedback uh, we're getting from clients. And um, in one of my previous videos, I mentioned that we've been working with Gartner based in the US who've given us some very specific uh, industry insight as to what services are lacking in the market. If you look at both centralized and decentralized uh, competitors, AWS, GCE, or let's say Akash, whoever it may be, right? Where, what's our market penetration strategy? So along with these stakeholders, we're you know going into the market right now with our current suite of services and what we're developing going forward. So now, one of the most exciting parts, uh, Gather Enterprise and the child chains. So over the last, um, well, in our white paper, in our original vision, right? We envision people would come and deploy on the Gather Layer 1 because uh, their, their blockchain can be secured via merge mining. So we projected in year one that we would have 10 child chains or 10 of these companies, products deploying with us. And what's actually happened in the last three months is so far we have seven that we're actively talking to or have signed contracts with that are deploying uh, tokens on the Gather network or the Gather blockchain specifically, which is fantastic that you know we've broken all targets. Um, we have our first uh, project called pay to go which is now in the seed phase and seeds close out. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, with the private sale, which is only accessible to Gather holders and our Launchpad partner as well. The Launchpad partner will be announced shortly. And the rest of these projects are going to come out uh, doing some, most of them are going to be doing private sales or, uh, you know, doing seed with Gather. Some of them will not be doing private sales or not having a token sale for specifically. There's one which I can't name too much about. If you've seen the earlier updates, it's a more of a uh, fringe kind of uh, service and product which has about, I think it was $400 million in revenue, and they'll be deploying on the Gather blockchain in the form of an NFT, uh, which is very, very, very exciting. It's very large uh, client for us. And we've been pushing, putting a lot of resources into this, uh, considerable amount of resources to get this off the ground. Um, so yeah, internally, we've had a new team that's looking after all of this, which is made up of Patrick, Saurabh, and uh, uh, Patrick, Saurabh, and Austin, they look after the incubations that all, that is going on because it's almost a full-time job and you need a lot of due diligence, you need a lot of hand-holding, tokenomics, you know, optics, structures, everything, and then obviously the capital raising as well. So they look after that and they're doing a fantastic job with it. You know, do, do keep uh, tuned to our social social media. You'll see all these updates we're posting. And it's a very, very exciting time uh, to be involved with Gather and what's going on. Uh, you know, a couple of months ago, we actually took Gather online live and we gave it to a bunch of different publishers, both small, medium, and large. And everyone was making a lot of money. Some, I remember the first week, there was one publisher. He actually made, I think it was $30,000 uh, of a very small uh, amount of traffic as well, which was very good to see. But uh, it was more of an error that happened on the back end. Good feedback we got from it. But, you know, it proved the model. It proved everything works as we're envisioning it. That was one side of the business model, the, uh, the supply side. Now we fix the demand side. And that's where cloud, uh, gather enterprise, the child chains, that all comes online and we have a balanced business model going forward. So overall, we have a very, you know, it, it's a very exciting time at Gather. Um, we're always hiring, by the way. Please check out careers. I just go to uh, gather.network, go to the career, career section. We're always looking for developers. We're always looking for more staff. Remote is usually okay for us. Uh, we have offices in Dubai, India, and, you know, we have a lot of staff based in Europe as well. Uh, if you're looking to enter blockchain or you're looking for career in crypto, please do, uh, you know, send us your CV. Always looking for good candidates. Um, and, yeah, I think... Uh, that's about it for me. Uh, thank you, Anne Maxine. It was an absolute pleasure. Current revenue generating methods don't allow publishers and businesses to offer an enjoyable ad-free browsing experience. We need a new solution that brings everything together to benefit businesses and users alike. That's why we made Gather. Gather is a blockchain-based network that improves the online experience for users, generates additional revenue for publishers, reduces cloud computing costs for enterprises, and makes running a proof-of-work blockchain easier. Instead of spamming users with ads to generate revenue, Gather runs in the background of your site, and with each user's consent, aggregates their idle processing power. Then, it distributes said power to enterprises for cloud computing and to developers for cryptocurrency mining. Publishers receive payment in cryptocurrency or fiat, users get to enjoy an ad-free browsing experience, and developers deploy their secure blockchains without the need to find new miners. Ultimately, it's a virtuous cycle that radically changes digital monetization and revenue generation to provide a superior experience for the end user. Join Gather today to be a part of the future. Imagine a lake with clear water.
and unpolluted air. Imagine a website with real news and no hidden, unlabeled, sponsored articles masquerading as real news. That place exists, and it's called Be in Crypto. The first and only cryptocurrency news portal to provide complete transparency and honest news. Pure, relevant, informative. Are you in? Did you know you can earn passive interest on your digital assets? With Aave, you can lend and borrow cryptocurrencies through an easy, secure DeFi protocol. Lenders deposit tokens and receive an interest earning representation called A tokens. Deposit USDC and receive AUSDC. Deposit DAI and receive ADAI. You can withdraw your assets at any time. The interest earned on A tokens will vary based on market supply and demand. Deposits sit in a global liquidity market, meaning that when demand is high, interest rates increase. This all happens automatically, without having to actively manage or monitor your position. With Aave, you can take out a loan by depositing collateral to borrow any supported assets. Repay the loan, along with any incurred debt, to unlock your original deposit. With passive interest paid in real time, it's no wonder Aave has aggregated billions of dollars in deposits to date. Head over to Aave.com to get started today. We help fund, build, and localize tech startups in the world's most promising regions. Cinefy is a one-stop solution for tech companies trying to make sense of China and Southeast Asia. Check out more at Cinefy.group. NFT and gamification are one of the main trends of this year. I'm glad to welcome the speaker whose company works in these both directions with us, Konstantin Shiroka, CMO at Crypto Combat. Konstantin, hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Synopsis Conference. Uh, my name is Konstantin Shirokov, and today I'm going to speak about implementing of the economic model into play-to-earn games. And I will share the experience and the approach of Crypto Combat uh, into this. A few words about me. I'm graduate of uh, Russian Economic Academy with master degree in marketing. I have 11 years working in the marketing space on uh, different positions in different industries. But uh, the, for the four last years, I have landed working in the blockchain industry and I'm really passionate about it. I have, uh, have I had experience in different, different uh, angles and different kind of companies in the space 
be it at analytical companies, wallet, exchanges. Uh, I have worked with uh, companies that tokenized uh, real estate and intellectual property. And currently I work uh, and I help two projects, one being decentralized financial company building uh, lending and borrowing services called bonded finance. And the second, uh, for which I am speaking today is the play to earn NFT game Crypto Combat. A couple of words about the project. What is Crypto Combat? Crypto Combat is a play to earn NFT battle card game. Lots of words. Uh, let's describe it. Uh, you, you know what is battle card game. The difference uh, with Crypto Combat is that the heroes of a game are the most prominent contributors in the blockchain space, uh, being it developers, uh, visionaries, investors, you know, our among our heroes are Satoshi Nakamoto, Vitalik Buterin, CZ of Binance, and many, many others, names that you are very familiar with. Uh, with, the, with the cards and with our NFT story, we do not only aim to, play, to create an engagement and uh, entertainment, but we also aim to preserve the legacy of the cryptocurrencies and pay an homage to the most important and prominent figures in the space. Uh, we have different NFT cards of different heroes. Uh, depends on its rarity, being it common cards that are 25 in thousands or the, the Genesis card. The Genesis card is unique and have only white, uh, only white, uh, on, it goes only in one, uh, in one quantity. And they, that card can only belong to the hero, the character itself. And currently we have uh, sent and uh, currently four heroes have accepted the cards in the game being Charlie Lee of Flightcoin, uh, Devin Finza of OpenSea, Giancarlo De Vossini of Tether, USDT, and, uh, and on Book of, of One Inch. Uh, our initial uh, distribution of token was among the, uh, the most active OpenSea users, and I will tell a little bit later about this as a marketing tool. And the game is based on NFT. It's a battle game uh, between one card and another. And the cards have different abilities and skills. And you can use different items, be it the attacks or some additional items uh, that, can, that can drive some skills and abilities of the player. Uh, currently, the, we are on the stage of collection with the users that, that can mint and take the collectible items on the platform, but we are planning the launch of the game itself before the end of the year. What problem do I want to address today? And that is a problem that is faced by every play to earn game, every play to earn economy. The problem is the is finding the proper balance uh, between stimulating the users and creating a sustainable economy. Because uh, if users are not rewarded enough, they will live. But if they are rewarded more than the, you can afford, you create an inflation and your token price is, uh, is lowering and that leads to fewer rewards and to users living. How can it be solved? Uh, I have come to four main principles that can that uh, sustainable play-to-earn economy should be built on. First one being community growth. Second one being creating the main tokenomic balance around gaming process and not around anything else. Third being that you should create the value for the users and for the ecosystem, not only inside, but outside of the ecosystem. And fourth, and fourth is that 
uh, the project should really work on raising the engagement with the ecosystem. Community growth. If you pay your users for playing the game, some of the users will take the value outside. They will take the payment and go out. So in order to have balance in the system, you should have some, and, and while you have a value out, you should have a value in. One of the, uh, one of the methods that you can create a value in is by growing your community. Uh, if you reward your players enough and other uh, potential players and potential users see how much uh, they are rewarded, they also onboard into the game. And while onboarding to the game, they bring the additional value in because in order to participate in play to earn ecosystem, first you should invade, invest. Uh, by buying the token or acquiring the, the characters in the game anyway, the, you invest first uh, into the game to participate. And no sustainable growth is available without a growth or the user base. Uh, the example uh, that I have given at the beginning is that uh, the, the driver or the community growth can be a project token. In case of Crypto Combat, we have distributed initially the token uh, via airdrop to OpenSea users. And that was our first marketing tool. And that was the, the way that we have invited the first community. For sure, some of those who received an airdrop just uh, sold it. But others took a look at the project and they are still among our core uh, audience and the, more, the most loyal ones. So in order to have a sustainable economy, you should grow your community. The balance uh, of the project or the play to earn project should be built around gaming. So the growth or the ecosystem really depends on the involvement in the gaming process by users. In case of Crypto Combat, the token supply that we have two tokens, one being combat token, uh, that is a you know starter token with which you, you can stake and, uh, and earn the returnal one internal is called Wombat. And the supply of the internal token is based on the in-gaming activity and the supply is growing every time uh, and the token is minted every time when the players uh, participate in battles and the gaming activity is multiplication of uh, invested money and invested time so in order to have a sustainable economy the you should grow both of those metrics In order to for the ecosystem uh, to grow, the demand for for tokens for the items should exceed the supply. How it can be achieved? It can be achieved by creating the additional items that users want to acquire, and and by the thing that users are motivated not only by the earning process but also they're motivated mostly by winning in the game because it's just natural that you want to win and the more you want to win and the more you want to earn you the, the more you invest your time and invest your money creating outside of the game value uh, there are there are two options uh, of trading outside value uh, for the ecosystem. First one is, is taking an investment outside for the project and spreading that investment among users. But th that is not long. That is not a sustainable model in the uh, long term. But with an implementation of the NFT technology, 
and the gaming and in in game items being transferable and being able to be sold in the free market uh, we create the value that can be transferred and can be sold in case of crypto combat that value is our cards that are that have that have their price and that have their utility in the market as being the collectible items. In case of crypto combat, they are limited and they are high quality items that are available by itself and they are sold on the secondary market. In our case, it's on an Ethereum network, it's on OpenSea. And as a nice bonus, uh, creating uh, those secondary market for the creators of the collection is the additional way to monetize because every time the item is sold on the secondary market the creator of the collection receive the fee for it so uh, create and the value for your users outside of the game if user can come to the come come to the project uh, and mint the cards and sell these cards uh, those cards outside it will make him more engaged in the uh, in the project and will attract much more users and cards are also being the promotional tool for the game raise engagement to the ecosystem first of all you should you should always create an additional stimulus for players uh, to use the project uh, and to use the items how can it be achieved uh, new items you can you, you can you know nft world allows the the uncountable numbers of the uh of different ways to participate and to create and uh, and to combine different items with, with one with each other and in in case of pretty combat we have different kind of uh, items that can be used in the game being it attacks that are spent every time every battle or being it special abilities that stays with the users uh, we need the ability to upgrade the card because uh, you know uh, some cards are rare and not all the users have uh, an ability and have come in the right time to have it but they can use a special mixer and uh, receive the more rare type of card using that mixer so we create different uh, kinds of the stimulus for users to spend the in-game token inside of the game and not to uh, to take out the value and uh, and decrease the token price and uh, start that uh, spiral of inflation yeah as i have said earlier the one of the main drivers behind this is not only the greed as we can tell it but also their desire to win in the game and and we should really build the system that is around their desire to win uh, so uh, the, for the players it is much more interesting to play one versus another than to play against environment uh, constant innovation to keep users interested yeah, that, that is that is the one the case and I have already mentioned that by creating the additional items, the additional types of engagement, you keep player interested and keep them uh, spending their money inside the system. So for this one, create the engagement in the ecosystem by stimulating additionally player to use the items. Next one. Uh, it is a possibly the rare case and the case only of the crypto combat because we are introducing that kind of uh, 
you know, reflectionary model into the play turn games, but that uh, practice can be implemented in other projects also. Uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, we are creating an additional stimulus for our players to hold the token uh, by implementing the reflectionary model uh, of the internal token. What does it mean? It means that the, the holders uh, of token can, uh, can spend it inside of the game for, for acquiring the items or, or participate in the game. But if they want to take the value out and to sell their tokens, they will be uh, part or the tokens will be burned and also distributed among the holders for the main token. So users have a choice, either stay in the ecosystem and receive a part of the rewards that are being created by other users living. So they have a choice to grow their capital inside by hodling or uh, go out and take value out and decrease their capital. It is the case for the internal token. In case of the main token, we create the additional, uh, it was the, the initial idea is that the supply of the initial token is limited. And our, in our case, it's very, very small being 21,000 of the combats on Ethereum network. And we create an additional and you know traditional and the crypto space uh, stimulus to hold by providing the staking opportunity and the staking opportunity is the only way that users can uh, participate in gaming because they can acquire cards on the free market and but uh, if they do not participate in staking they do not receive an in-game energy and can participate in game so we stimulate uh, holding of both of the tokens and not taking our value outside of the system. So to summarize, play to earn uh, is here to stay because uh, play to earn games satisfy the two main uh, you know, needs of the human being it entertainment and money. Uh, there can be a lot of different solutions of how to create a sustainable economy for play to earn games, but the key principles will stay and will be the same. You should attract more players, you should encourage them to play more, and you should create an additional value for them. Thank you very much for your time. Play Crypto Combat. And the next speaker is Paul Rogash, CEO at Battle. Paul, hello. G'day guys. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Paul Rogash. I'm the CEO of BetU. I just wanted to take you through the two flat platforms we're building. Um, one is a peer-to-peer -peer and bookmaker style gaming site. The other is a uh, fantasy betting game. So we've built two completely separate platforms. One, BetU. Here it is, uh, just a presentation of the promotional site. We're targeting all major sports and eSport events. As you might be aware, the, the sports betting industry is, a, is an enormous industry in terms of the size that is wagered on sports every year. Over $391 billion is wagered on sports each year. Now, to put that in perspe into perspective, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, if you combine the top 50 cryptocurrencies, the market cap of all them combined is less than what is wagered on sports each year. In addition to that, another $23.5 billion is wagered on esports. Esports is also a massive 
um, massively growing industry in terms of the amount of people that are watching eSport with over uh, 500 million people every year tuning in to watch it. So we're tapping into both those industries. The way it works is we have, um, you can do peer-to-peer -peer betting, so cross-country against someone else, or you can bet against BetU as an actual bookmaker. Now, everything we do is powered by the BetU token. So I just wanted to go through the utility here. Everything to do with BetU is powered by the BetU token. So there's the, the betting, governance, token burning, betting rewards, staking, whale holder benefits, it's all done with the BetU token. So each time you make a bet, the, both parties has to have the BetU token in order to place the bet. A portion of every bet is burnt and the winner takes the reward of the, the BetU tokens. We've got a very experienced team. Uh, myself, um, CEO, Graham Malone, CTO, CPO, Scott Parry, CFO, uh, Brent's our social media manager, and we've got a, a team of about 18 developers as well. Now flicking over quickly to BetU Fantasy, which is gonna launch um, within the next 10 days. BetU Fantasy is, is just a game. There's no real betting, there's only real rewards. And how this works is you must hold one BetU token to play, and then you get a chance to win up to $10,000 every week. So you'll join a league, the initial leagues will be um, English Premier League. So you'll join a league and you get a thousand fantasy tokens uh, each week to play with. Whoever accumulates the most money at the end of the week wins real crypto prizes. Now in terms of gaming and the crypto industry, there's a, a huge opportunity you'll see with the likes of Axie has accumulated a, a market cap of around $8 billion. So we're really trying to tap into that play to earn, play to win, gaming with BetU Fantasy. You can also tap into all the um, sport and eSport events similar to BetU, but this is a no risk game. So anyone who uh, doesn't like to lose, can't afford to lose, but still is, would enjoy the thrill of sports betting, then BetU Fantasy is for them. There's our target market listed here is uh, the gaming market, the sports market, eSports and crypto. So we're trying to combine all of those into one gaming platform, which will show you a video at the end, a little overview of uh, BetU Fantasy. So winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. There's no risk here, it's just a game. You just have to hold um, a BetU token. So what happens is you, to play, you uh, join a league, you choose which, which league that would be, maybe English Premier League, Fortnite, uh, the NBA, NFL, whatever it is, you can join a league and then you make fantasy bets. So you have to hold one bet you token to play and then you make fantasy bets every week. If you uh, lost during the week, that's all right. You play the next week and you get another chance to win. So every week there's winners and there's two different leagues. So there's a minor league and a major league. If you want to play for more rewards, then you would join the major league. If you just want to hold the one bet you token, then that's fine and you can play in the minor league. So we're really excited to be launching this within the next two weeks. Uh, we think we'll rapidly grow our user base for, for BetU and uh, an enormous utility for the BetU token holders. So that's all for the presentation today. We'll do a short video on, um, we'll play for, of both BetU and BetU Fantasy. Thank you for your time and have a good day.
May 7, 2020, Freetown was created by 13 big validator companies from all over the world. A completely decentralized world created by the power of community. Freetown has never had any particular owner. It doesn't have an ICO. All funds from the givers serve as the reward for the useful and important for the network actions via competition-based contest. Freetown got very big partners. After having engaged 1,000 partners, Freetown will have 1 billion of users. Do you want to become part of that? You can. Enter the contests. Offer your contests to the community. Engage partners with big audience. Or just buy tokens and take part in staking. Are you ready to join the decentralized world? We are waiting for you. Welcome to the Theta Network. Earn T-Fuel crypto rewards simply by watching live streams and videos. As you watch and share with others, you're contributing to the decentralized Theta network, all powered by Theta's native blockchain. Discover the future of video delivery at thetanetwork.org. So NFT and digital art is perhaps the main theme of this year, as far as everyone knows. And now there will be a panel discussion dedicated to NFT with the participation of industrial leaders. So the leading and moderator of the discussion will perform a beautiful set of Shemkina, CEO at DAO.VC and crypto advisor. So I send the word to Serafima. Serafima, you can start.
Well, my greetings for everyone here to all the viewers of Synopsis 2021. My name is Serafim Simkina and I'm Chief Operating Officer at DAOVC. And today I will be the moderating this panel discussion on NFT and digital art. As all of us being the participants of crypto market, we are aware of the growing interest for the technology. And in 2021, the world was swept over by the movement and all over the world. Even people who are not that close to the tech and blockchain are aware of this and start becoming involved. Uh, the growing interest in these digital collectibles resulted in record-breaking trading volumes. And even during this August, individual sales of NFT was exceeding $1 million. We have gathered today with the experts in the industry to discuss the topic and to see the, um, to see the common beliefs, understand the trend, and to understand how that impacts our society and economy in general, as well as look at the various applications of the technology and see where it extends. I'm welcoming here today with us Wes Levitt, the head of strategy of Theta Labs. And Wes, separate thank you for issuing the NFT live during the last year Synopsis uh, Summit. It was fantastic. Thank you for being with us today. Yeah, of course. Great, uh, great to be here, and glad we could collaborate on some uh, unique NFTs for the Synopsis viewers too. Uh, thank you, Wes. We also have with us uh, Mohamed Karim, co-founder of uh, and CFO of Curate, Alexander Filatov, the co-founder of Ton Labs and the leader of the community Freeton, Oksana Tupa, the president of Rotary Club Kiev International. Oksana, I heard about, I heard about your <clears throat> collaborations with Binance and related to NFT and all the charity work you've been doing, and we are looking forward to hear more about that. Uh, we also have with us Dmitry Prokopenka, the co-founder of Block Orange Capital Group, CryptoTribe.io, BD Treasure Land Market, and OpenSky.Finance. And last but absolutely not least is Angel Versetti, the CEO of MoonRabbit. Well, now it will be my pleasure to pass over the words to each one of you to better present yourself and share your expertise and current projects you're working on. Uh, Wes, let's start with you. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, uh, at Theta Labs, what we've built over the last four years or so is the Theta blockchain and ecosystem around that. Uh, Theta's focus is on decentralized products in the media and entertainment space. Um, core to that is decentralized video infrastructure. So. Uh, for sites like our own Theta TV or other video platforms, uh, what Theta Blockchain allows you to do is uh, have video distributed uh, or relayed peer-to-peer -peer between users uh, around the world, which can lower your costs and increase your viewer engagement. And as a, a reward for that, users earn tokens on the Theta Blockchain. So you can think of it as uh, relative to the, the old peer-to-peer -peer model where you don't get anything out of it for sharing. It's uh, incentivized for users to contribute their excess bandwidth or excess computing resources on this decentralized network so everyone can benefit. Uh, and then relevant to our, our topic today, um, because we're focused on the video space, a lot of creators we have relationships with got very excited about NFTs starting last year and of course exploded this year. So we started launching NFTs on Theta blockchain last year and then in uh, early this year launched the Theta Drop NFT website. Um, so that uh, serves a couple different purposes. We're doing uh, NFTs from our community members, uh, which are often kind of more the, the V1 uh, collectible art style. Uh, but we're also working with some marquee partners that are uh, doing what we'd like to think of as the next, next phase of NFTs where they're more interactive and have more uses. So uh, a couple of partners doing that with like World Poker Tour and Katy Perry coming up uh, next month. And then uh, also one championship, uh, the largest MMA uh, promotion in Asia. Uh, really excited about this one coming up because they're really diving deep into this next level of NFTs idea we're talking about. So like uh, you own an NFT of your favorite fighter that might grant you discounted tickets to his next fight, or it might mean you actually get to vote on who is the, uh, uh, who is the next challenger for a belt. So. That, that's kind of an example we are, are trying to encourage where we go from just uh, sort of the passive version of NFTs to the, the future ones where you interact as, a, as an owner. Thank you, Wes. Thank you. Very interested. And personally, I'm a big fan of the coin. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, thank you. Um, Mohammed, uh, would you like to tell us more about your experience and uh, the great? 
Sure. First, I'd like to thank the organizers for having me here today. It's truly an honor. It's really exciting times for the space as well. So a little bit about myself. I am the CFO and co-founder at Curate. Um, I also specialize in advising small and large technology companies to help really implement blockchain into their businesses. So a good example would be somebody I'm working with in Australia that are looking to build smart cities in the Philippines. And I'm acting as their advisor to help them build sort of this thing and take advantage of the business models that you can have with a blockchain sort of infrastructure from a technical solutions level and from a business development level. At Curate, um, something that I'm really passionate about in the crypto space is user experience. I find the technology is absolutely amazing, but one of the biggest drawbacks is trying to get your grandmother to actually use this technology without any drawbacks. So what we've set out here at Curate is kind of like to solve all the drawbacks that kind of bothered me. So looking at what we stand for is complete simplicity and to encapsulate us in a sentence, we are gasless multi-chain NFT marketplace with easy to use minting features. So we actually tested it out on our marketing guy's son, Steve. Um, he gave his son the phone and he's kind of like a little bit of an artist and was like, turn that into an NFT. And with a few clicks of a button, he was able to mint that NFT on the app, which for us was kind of a major achievement. And, and what we're looking at going forward is really taking these amazing technologies that everybody has built, such as the Theta blockchain, Solana, BNB, and incorporating that ecosystem into ones that gives everyone that complete full circle of an experience. So you're not limited to any sort of ecosystem, but rather have that bridge with NFTs and tokens everywhere. And yeah, it's, it's really super exciting. I mean, one of our biggest milestones we've just completed is being the first NFT marketplace to be approved, well, fully functional to be approved on the iOS app store. And being a young company that was founded in 2019, um, completely bootstrapped and no VC funding, that was an incredible achievement. And we're really excited going forward and just building out this complete user experience and hoping to be the backbone and, and one-stop shop for anybody who's looking to mint an NFT and sell it on a marketplace. To, to add to that, we've kind of also made a few breakthroughs in Ethereum, where we've, um, I know this sounds crazy, where we've kind of managed to mint NFTs for a 99% discount. So if the network fee is $200, we can do the same thing for about $2 per an NFT. And we hope to make that infrastructure available in the near future to everybody. So they have access to a, a better user experience, firstly, something that's not buckled by the $200 fees we see on other marketplaces. So you could see Curate as the gateway to minting your NFTs, as well as an added benefit of having that marketplace to sell your NFTs. And, and I know it sounds like a lot, but to even add a bridge to any other network, whether it's tokens or NFTs, and that's sort of what we're doing at Curate, and it's a super exciting time, and thank you for having me here. Well, thank you, Mohammed. Uh Wonderful, very interesting, and I'm pretty sure we all will check out <clears throat> the the app on iOS uh, after this session. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Alexander, would you like to tell us more about Tone Labs and uh, your experience there and where you're coming from? Well, Tone Labs is a core developer of Freetone Network. Freetone Network is uh, is a fully functional mainnet for about a year and a half now. It's we believe strongly believe we're the first ones who really figured scalability now with functional multi-threading. In August, we showed comfortably 50,000 TPS uh, per second on open internet, not, not in one data center, on open internet and on distributed network of 200 validators. And we can scale it um, to significantly higher throughputs. Um, and it's also low latency and low transaction fees. The reason I think performance is important as we talk about NFT is because once there is you know, bigger brands and then more NFTs come uh, come into the world, there'll be significantly higher load on, on the network. We can already see some early signs of flow struggling uh, with just a couple of projects. Obviously, we all know the Ethereum story. So we believe that performance is going to matter very quickly. As you know, tens of millions of NFTs hit, hit different marketplaces. We also figured the concept of true NFT. It's fully functional and free tone. True NFT means that it's, 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 that it's all the three elements, including interface and media itself, are part of the NFT, part of the smart contract. The reason it's important is that we saw already with you know, regular NFTs or simple NFTs, whatever you call them, that whenever media is not part of the NFT itself, 
and sit somewhere in the data center or somewhere you know remote from the from the ownership on the blockchain it, it can be many things can go wrong you know it can be sold multiple times it can be deleted by chance etc cetera, etc cetera. when media is part of the nft it's obviously you know one coherent and single uh element and, and you truly own that so we're pushing that concept we can talk about that um and uh, just a little bit about the network we and again with focus on nft we have about four nft marketplaces of different kind of kind of kind of shape and there are like a few more coming up the reason it's many is because we have a very decentralized governance and open governance that any team from around the world can come to the network and do stuff can suggest contests contests can be approved and um you know and financed with tokens so uh that's how we have a lot of different, you know, things being born on the network. And also very much looking forward to the discussion. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Um, Oksana, um, president of Rotary Club Kiev International. Please tell us more about your work and uh, all the endeavors. Uh, thank you for introduction and uh, thank you for inviting me to the conference. I'm very happy to be here and I uh, would like to tell that uh, Rotary and me are here as a charity part of your conference because in fact I'm not uh, in fintech uh, area, I'm in charity and uh, my club is part of a big international Rotary organization and is uh, non-governmental uh, uniting Rotary clubs around the world and we are a network of uh, non religious and non-political charitable organization for, for all countries uh, and regardless of national or racial uh, affiliation, religion or political views. As community, Rotary is more than 100 years of old and we are fundraising for our charity projects uh, around the world. So our experience with uh, charity and with uh, NFT uh, has started, started this year. Last year, we had the experience only with donation in uh, cryptocurrency for COVID projects. We were buying masks and suits, uh, protective suits and masks uh, with COVID situation. And uh, thanks uh, to our crypto donors, we did this uh, project perfectly. This year, we started and launched our projects together with, uh, uh, with an NFT marketplace, and we have started uh, our sales. And we hope that we succeed here because some of uh, billionaires, crypto billionaires, football players, uh, famous people joined us, and uh, we want to sell their portraits with their signatures and with AR artifacts, especially developed with with our donors and we hope that nfts will become also very good media and uh, opportunity tool for charity because when charity comes into one market uh, that makes it more warm heartful and uh, more uh, full of uh, uh, social and people energy not only figures not only just their uh, economy, not only just uh, money, but also uh, some si uh, shyness in, uh, in this uh, area, because it makes uh, uh, this, the charity uh, atmosphere makes uh, cryptocurrency more people oriented, I think, and uh, more uh, warm to people. Uh, that is why I'm here, because we started selling NFTs for charity not for earning money, but for charity, because all the money that we get from the selling of NFTs goes to charity and to charity projects worldwide. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very wonderful application of uh, NFT and all the gains that crypto markets bring to us. Um, well, great idea and good luck to the Rotary Club. <clears throat> That's great. Uh, we also have with us today Dmitry Prokopenko, uh, co-founder of Block Oracle Capital, Crypto Tribe, Treasure Land Market, and Open Sky Finance. Dmitry, uh, the word to you. Uh, thank you for having me. It's so great time to be with you guys. I see great contributors to the blockchain on this call. I would like to go deeply with your topics a bit later, and uh, I'm contributing in five projects, and my main uh, project is Block Oracle Capital. I'm as an investor and investing in a private sales and also secondary market. And during the last year, we have been investing 
uh, very heavily in NFT sphere and mostly in NFT trading platforms. And one of these platforms is Treasureland, in which plat in this platform more contributing uh, have been one of the investors, but also contributing in this in this platform as and helping with business development and uh, marketing strategies. And beside this, oh, mm, uh, I'm cooperating with a project called Open Sky, which is DeFi plus NFT platform. It's NFT lending protocol, which I believe will be next generation of uh, in demand on the market because all these people who buy these NFTs, they don't want to sell this NFT. So there is a logic that people can stake this NFTs and get passive income on this. So the topic which we had with Aave and Compound in the past, I think it can be really implemented on NFT field. And uh, by these things, I participated in an open sky project, uh, which given possibility uh, to realize this and solve the problem of uh, li liquidity on NFT, NFT field by um, participating in like kind of uh, strategy as peer to pool. When a peer is one owner of NFT and a pool is kind of a pool of investors who are contributing uh, Ethereum as a collateral to get more rewards. So very interesting project technically. And beside this, um, I see that here is also some public chain. So we are also contributors on the public chain. We have a, uh, our node, our, we, we top, was top validators on EOS in the past and uh, right now contributing to eight and other networks such as Algorand, Near, and another network. So uh, basically we're also looking for prominent blockchains to be a validator and to help this, this blockchain to promote in, in the future. Beside this, uh, participating with the, uh, with the projects like uh, IDO platforms and uh, contributing more in like uh, in a um, EVM, public chains such as Polygon and, um, and BSC. And talking about Treasureland right now is uh, one of the most successful projects nowadays right now, uh, which I participated in late times. And I'm very happy to be with the team, very good, strong team. And uh, uh, by the way, we also have been contributing uh, to the charity with uh, Treasureland uh, when it was, uh, Remember that Shiba coin was very hard. That time we, we was there was a very hard situation in India with coronavirus. So we us and different artists contributed about three hundred thousand USDT to India to help people with the with the coronavirus that time. So charity thing I think taking place in the crypto because you can fractionalize a tiny amount of uh, assets to different people to different wallets. But definitely not on Ethereum network right now, but basically maybe on another networks. So there is plenty of things we are doing right now. And me, pro, me uh, participate in different, different projects as investor, as angel investor, and as a contributor at the same time. And I really like to spend time and uh, help people with inbound sources and helping with the marketing. Uh, would you like to repeat uh, the last phrase after you said, um, I like to participate in different projects because we lost you for a second? Oh. Uh, I mean, if I will be, yeah. uh, if I will be useful, and um, I, if I, if we can do some, some um, make a world better together, I really hope we can participate a call uh, one by one and talk about the business uh, after the call. So really happy to be with you and happy to make world better. Thank you. Absolutely wonderful proposition, Dmitry. Thank you very much. Yes, blockchain for good. <laughs> Angel, um, thank you for joining us here today. We have Angel Versetti, the CEO of MoonRabbit, and I would pass the word to Angel to introduce himself and the project. Angel, hello. I think you're on mute. I think Angel is experiencing some technical problem. 
It's been surprisingly still for some time. Hi, Angel. Yes. Uh, thank you for the connection. Let us get back to our um, session. And uh, yeah, I would like to pass the word to Angel Versetti, the CEO of Moonrabbit, to present himself and explain about his endeavors and ideas and experience. Angel? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Angel. I'm the founder and CEO of Moonrabbit. Uh, Moonrabbit has launched a substrate based infrastructure with the same technical core as Polkadot with the goal to make Web3 scalable and accessible. So we have basically lowered the barriers to access to blockchain and Web3 for the entrepreneurs uh, wishing to launch uh, scalable solutions without paying for gas, without paying for validators infrastructure so they can focus on their product, whatever that might be, whether that's a DeFi protocol an NFT marketplace, esports or any other application. And uh, generally speaking, the network itself, besides being a scalable launchpad for Web3 entrepreneurs, it also has a flagship project called Longevity DAO. And the purpose of that project is to uh, facilitate growth and development of the longevity industry. So we offer tools such as crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, and open source collaboration platform to people who are researching such topics as life extension, as well as anti-aging therapies. So this is the exciting crossover between two mega trends, uh, the Web3 and crypto with the longevity industry. And for those of you who are following the thought leaders of crypto, you will know that for many years, uh, some of the biggest names in the crypto industry, Vitalik, Joseph, Gavin, uh, Roger Ver, and a few others, they've been actively investing into longevity. Uh, so crypto uh, spirit is very much present in the industry. And at the same time, it's a very young and nascent industry. So we use Web3 and uh, crypto tools to empower entrepreneurs in that space. And since we're talking about NFTs today, uh, we have a flagship project also launching on Moonrabbit Network that will specifically use NFTs within the framework of DAOs. So DAOs is a decentralized autonomous organization. So it will permit decentralized management of NFT collections, fractionalizing NFTs, and performing different financial and market transactions using NFTs in a decentralized manner. Thank you, Angel. Thank you That's for cool. the uh, application of technologies and um, love to mo uh, hear more from you later. Uh, although let's get to our discussion and um, uh, well, uh, NFT and digital art, uh, as we mentioned before, it's a huge boom. Everybody's talking about it. It's in a mainstream news. And I just want to give some numbers that even if we look at the last half a year, the market value increased tenfold. Literally in April 2021, there was the aggregated value of NFTs was $64 million. And in, by, as of September 2021, the aggregated sales value was uh, amounting to roughly $774 million. Just, uh, of course, this is very attractive to the users of the industry and ecosystem is becoming more and more mature every day, but remains highly speculative. Hence, buyers are coming uh, to buy the assets and looking at reselling them at a higher price, which uh, for average, not that crypto involved person uh, would uh, bring to a question, what defines the value of NFT and how to understand what makes, uh, what makes up the price? Uh, who would like to take their first word and share his opinion on this? Wes? Sure. Mm. Yeah, I think that uh, there's a lot of different ways you can answer it, but a lot of it comes down to uh, what type of NFTs we're talking about. So in the uh, first part where I talked about the, the different types, you know, kind of the most basic version people know about is the, the collectible or the art uh, version of NFT. I mean, I think that's kind of similar to your traditional art markets. Uh, where it's it's really uh, it, it's subjective what it's worth. Uh, it's really just a matter of supply and demand because there's not a can't really do a discounted cash flow analysis on a, a Rembrandt uh, any more than you can do an NFT. It's really just what someone's willing to pay for it. Same thing with you know think about like collectibles. A rare baseball card is only worth something because collectors have all decided that that's what it's worth based on its scarcity. So that one a little tricky. It's it just kind of is what people think it is worth minus any wash trading which is unfortunately pretty common in nfts um 
but when we get into the more uh, so sort of these next level NFTs where there's real world uh, benefits attached to them, then I think it's easier to value what it's worth. Like that example I gave with with one championship, if you can get discounts on tickets, then you could actually uh, do the numbers on those and say, okay, so if I plan on using this NFT, I get discounts on five different fights. If I was going to go to all those already, maybe that saves me 300, 300 bucks. So at a minimum, maybe I think that NFT is worth $300 in discounts, um, plus any value I just get out of it because I enjoy having it in my collection. So really kind of depends on what the NFT does to, to see what its value is. Alexander, what's your take on that? I'm kind of, I can echo what Wes said, basically. For me, the value of NFTs is formed by also, it depends also on, on a few elements, additional elements. One is scarcity. You know, how scarce is the thing? Because if there are millions of, you know, something of the same baseball card, it's like, who's going to need it long term? There is obviously an important an element of endorsement uh, in there. Like if I throw an NFT tomorrow of my dog and Elon Musk, you know, tweets it, my NFT is going to be very valuable tomorrow. This is just a smile. I'm not a big fan of Elon's tweeting, to put it softly. Um, there is, of course, an element of gamification. Uh, as I don't want to repeat, kind of, I think was mentioned it already. If that's part of something bigger, you know. I think there is an element um, of, um, and in gamification, I would particularly underline as well the play to earn thing. I think we're entering the world where, you know, there'll be a lot of play to earn gaming. And NFTs would have somewhat different dynamics there because of that, because it would be part of your kind of income, regular income as well. There are some smaller things, but that's uh, that. Those are the ones that I would highlight. Thank you, Alexander. Mohammed, please. Yeah, I think firstly I'd like to agree with both Wes and Alexander. But when it comes to NFTs, um, the way I see it is kind of like DeFi in its early stages. I mean, people are still kind of experimenting with the technology and really seeing its capabilities. And, and what really gets me excited is sort of the road ahead and what, what we could see from NFTs serving some real world benefits. And the one that gets me really excited is particularly with gaming, being a gamer myself. And kind of when all these games that have these in-app purchases like Fortnite skins start to really implement NFTs and it becomes sort of universal amongst other games. And that will kind of join that IRL and URL environment in that sense, allowing you to really transpire these skins into different environments, such as Decentraland and allowing these users to kind of use these skins. And if you take it one step further, not many people know that NFTs can actually be embedded with an actual token value. So for example, you could have an NFT that as a backing of $100,000 in USDT. And that could essentially serve as bond provision in the future and other sort of interest bearing contracts. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, you could even start shopping for your clothes in a virtual space and have a, a virtual character that matches your dimensions and that NFT could be linked to a real world product. And to me, that's really what gets me excited looking at the space. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, Angel, what's what's your take on the question and how do you think a um, regular user can see the value apart from personal and subjective evaluation? Um, in terms of departing from the subjectiveness in NFTs, I think it's uh, the least straightforward pathway because they are by default very closely related to sentiment, to the community feelings about it, to the scarcity and so on and so forth. So um, trying to find some objective price metrics there is similar to art. Um, I guess one of the uh, tendencies I have been observing with regards to NFTs is sort of the antique approach towards them. Just like in the uh, regular world, we value antique stuff or some segments of the society at least do. Uh, we do see the same in the, amongst the NFTs that some of the oldest projects they tend to be uh, regularly more expensive than the new ones. Uh, that's, I think, uh, the most logical part because you can never beat time. So whoever minted the very first collections, I guess they will forever be the first. So you can't argue against that. Other than that, I think it could be the uniqueness factor. So uh, I think the circumstances around which the NFTs are minted, they could be the value determination 
So uh, someone here earlier on talked about minting NFTs during live streams. I think that's one example of a unique circumstance for minting NFTs. There could be others such as during some sort of special concerts with celebrities or any sort of special events, uh, occasions or any other particular events. Um, we do see that also amongst the uh, tradable NFTs issued by the NBA and I think the NFL in the United States where they auction off NFTs representing special moments within the sports games. So I think that could kind of be quantified in the financial terms because if the game has been, for example, very spectacular or it was the biggest number of points that was scored, you could argue that the NFT representing the goals from that game could be more valuable. But that is ultimately anyway not purely subjective because you, whilst you can apply these metrics to try and say, okay, that maybe the NFT representing the game that was won by a huge margin or that was in the championship final is more valuable than the game, which was just an average friendly match between the teams. Um, so you could kind of apply that logic, I guess, to try and value them objectively. But I think to a large extent, uh, the what we see today amongst NFTs is similar to what we see amongst modern art is that it's not the effort, it's not the special difference. It's uh, either based on the community sentiment or the uniqueness factor that was either created or modeled by the influencers as stakeholders. Thank you, Angel. Yes, well, I absolutely agree with you um, <clears throat> on the uniqueness uh, factor and uh, community around NFT that is um, necessary for it being popular and gaining the value. Aksana, uh, how do you and uh, your club, how do you select NFTs and how do you think which would be the most valuable uh, in order for you to take the profits to charity? What is take from your angle? In fact, we are producing the, the NFTs ourselves uh, with our artists and we want to sell them with uh, famous people. So we are doing, we are drawing uh, NFTs with uh, famous uh, billionaires, uh, like, uh, for example, what is going on is Andrea Grenier and many others. Uh, they are in secret because every, every lot will be a secret first. And we want them to be sold and uh, the money go to charity. Uh, that is why we are not selling and reselling. We are producing, we are asking artists to produce the artifacts, uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, pictures and artifacts with augmented reality. We believe that this is uh, the first time in our NFT market. And we want them to be sold and uh, take the money for charity. So we are trying to uh, develop uh, different uh, approaches for NFTs to make them uh, vivid, to make them uh, prominent, to make them interesting for collectors to buy and uh, to resell. Uh, this is our idea, to be uh, original, to be unique and to make a collection. Because we see that collectors are searching for collections. Thank you. Thank you, Oksana. Uh, we have lost for a second Dmitry, but I'm pretty sure he will join us uh, back very shortly. Uh, meanwhile, I suggest we continue our discussion and, uh, well, we see the market and uh, there are emerging number of NFT creators and obviously nowadays the technology allows everyone to produce an NFT and as Mohammed mentioned, we can all try the curate app uh, there and even grandmother will be able to use the technology. Uh, but nevertheless, there are certain challenges while producing it, like minting fees, not sometimes not understanding what blockchain is better to use, what marketplace to go to. What do you think are the main challenges and would you have any recommendations on how to make the choice, how to select out of that variety that is now on the market to ensure that, well, it just to, to, to select something for yourself. Um, how do you think um, about that? Um, well, I don't want to go in the same order. Mohammed, do you want to go first this time? Sure, I, I don't mind kickstarting it. I mean, looking at how I would select an exchange would be a couple things or a marketplace. I think firstly would be um, liquidity. 
Secondly, to me would be fees. And I'm a crypto user, but I'd like to say user experience as well. And then for the real maximalist, maybe decentralized. So kind of looking at it as a walled garden and, and seeing which one provides the, the gates open to kind of access everything with flexibility. So I would look at that. I think definitely for me, it's liquidity, gas fees, and flexibility. Okay. Wes, as a technology enabler and provider, mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's your take? What advice would you give to a young NFC creator who just come into the market and uh, how you think you should make the choice? Yeah, you know, we, uh, we focus a lot on at Theta and trying to solve the problems with the, the obviously the, the biggest uh, entity out there, Ethereum. So the major one being gas fees, transaction times, uh, that, that sort of thing, just the frictions in the system. And we've been successful in that. Gas fees are, you know, less than uh, 5% of those on Ethereum, uh, typically even far less than that. Transaction times are in the 15 to 20 seconds. Um, that said, uh, just competing on speed and low transaction fees is not going to get you there alone. It's actually a, a great time to be a creator because there's probably 10 or 15 different blockchains that can meet that need right now. It remains to be seen how all of them can meet at scale, but I think the, the power in the market is actually with the creators. If you're a, a really strong NFT creator in demand, you could probably go to multiple different blockchains and shop for incentives. It's a little bit like being a, an entrepreneur in this day and age where there's way too much VC money funding every kind of project you can think of. Um, and you're actually holding the cards as the entrepreneur to make them bid against each other. So, um, yeah, if you're, it, it's a good time to be a creator. And I think I would say, besides just looking for incentives, try to think about which blockchain and, and ecosystem around is really meeting the needs of what you're doing. Like for example, with Theta, we've made a lot of focus on um, those with video and and broadcast elements to them because that's core to what we build as far as video infrastructure, which is why World Poker Tour was great. We stream their, their poker tournaments uh, that they have on TV the same time you were in NFTs. With uh, Katy Perry, it's in conjunction with her Las Vegas residency coming up. So you watch the residency, has uh, that entertainment element to it, and then you are in, you can also get the NFTs for it as well. So we're kind of carving out that niche. If you're an NFT creator looking in the sort of fine art type of world, there's probably a better one than Theta. But you know, there's lots of options out there. Uh, yes. uh, Dmitry, what advice would you give to NFT creators, and how should they choose the blockchain if they don't understand particularly what that means? What would be the steps to identify the way of minting the NFT and producing it? Uh, sorry, I was dropped off from the call, but back to Colin. I would like to answer both questions. So the first question was how to evaluate NFTs. What is, what is evaluation? What the process and how can be done, right? And the second question, what advice for the NFT creators and minters, uh, which way to move? Am I right? Yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, answering the first question, um, right now, as Wes told, because uh, after that, I didn't hear what another guy was talking about. So uh, right now, the situation that one person can evaluate NFT by himself. So I can appoint the price of my NFT and drop into the market and to see how the market will respond. If there will be consensus around, for example, bricks collectibles or or Mibits or CryptoPunk or whatever people thinking is, is good uh, good uh, thing to invest in. But I think that evaluation should come not from the uh, NFT minter or owner. Evaluation should come from the market. That's what we see right now is appointed pricing of NFTs, but not real evaluation. So from my perspective, like evaluation of the, for example, all crypto is, is, is market cap is what is capitalization of uh, Bitcoin and all the other cryptocurrencies. This is the value. And evaluation in what? If we say in the USDT, then it's not, there is no objective uh, kind of things which, which can uh, show us the value of the market really. But we, all we are looking is 
the same meaning, same opinion and consensus. Like we think that evaluation of the market is like this because numbers and metrics shows like this. We found the uh, metrics is consensus around the metrics is the most important thing. So in our case, if we say that NFT has value, that let's see how much value people can lock inside NFTs. For example, if we say Mona Lisa picture, and this is like the ancient NFT, which evaluated by the cultures, by numerous of people, and how many people pay ticket to see this uh, uh, Mona Lisa. So that's how, how much people gave to this Mona Lisa. This is evaluation. So you can count through the period of time how much money was spent to see this, this, uh, this uh, art piece. And in such case, you can evaluate this art piece. That's why rarities and uh, 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 kind of ancient arts, very valuable through the time because it's saving its value through the period of time. That's why what we see right now in the NFTs market is a very, very early stage. And I do not think that only art piece have in place in NFTs. There can be anything in the future. The point is we do not have the right now the tool which given a possibility to migrate uh, massively uh, different objects from real life to the virtual world. But I think it's a question of time and soon we will have it. So I think evaluation of NFT is getting from evaluation of locked value inside this NFT. So this is one of the ways. Another way is uh, public auctions, but we all know that in cryptocurrencies, anonymous transactions, it easily can be gained. So there is no objective metrics to show this, this thing. Um, answering the second question, what kind of advice I, I'm thinking where to move in, uh, in the future? Um, from from perspective, what I was have been working with and see successful cases for for sure, I would like to say, yeah, guys, we need to have a look in the game field right now because game field given possibility uh, interact with one NFT multiple times and get making games from one NFT multiple times. For example, if you say Axis game, you can have your Axie Axie uh, pet and then you can this pet can breed more pets. So you have possibility to interact with your NFTs and get more actions. And in such case, this is how, um, how you can uh, get more value from this. And in future, I think collectibles should have some additional value on the top, just not avatar or holding it uh, and show that this is cool to have, to be in collection of CryptoPunks. CryptoPunks cool because it's consensus and because it's first NFTs. But I believe that in future, there will be many more things which are more interested than just collections or art pieces. And right now we're experiencing uh, game, game field and game five. And I think in the future will be something else uh, more valuable. And I think will be maybe even real estate or housing. I used to invite, invest a couple of projects on housing, getting on NFTs and uh, fractionalizing these NFTs between the people. So these things have in place in future as far as we have custody to prove that there is a value migrating proper way from real world to the virtual world. So it can be anything. Thank you, Dmitry. Thank you. Well, um, I'd like to address the same question to Alexander and to, to explain us um, about different blockchains and how uh, should a creator um, choose a certain blockchain. Uh, for us, this is very simple. Uh, for uh, well, um, participants here at the panel, uh, we all understand about gas fees, about minting process. Uh, this is very straightforward, but for an artist who wants to go to the digital world, he might just like the knowledge. As a, pro as a creator of a um, blockchain or participant in a creator, what's your take on this and how do what do you think? Yeah, sure. Well, I certainly want to join the previous speakers said um, that liquidity is important and the user base at the particular marketplace, because if there are three people on that marketplace, you know, you, you're not going to sell much. Uh, so I certainly echo the liquidity and user base. The second one I would uh, mention is user experience, um, because for some of us, you know, 
using MetaMask and, uh, and and stuff like that is, is kind of okay. But I remember my first time with MetaMask, I can't remember, four years ago or something, whenever it came up. It's like it can be messy for, for an artist who comes in, uh, figuring out MetaMask plus OpenSea cannot be, cannot, might not be necessarily pleasurable experience. So when you come first time. Uh, so that's the second thing I would say. And I think then moving on, there'll be some niche marketplaces focusing on a particular you know, industry, uh, be it sports or art. I know, I know stuff like we have in our community, we have a Chinese team, which is doing a TikTok-like mechanics uh, marketplace where you have TikTok kind of mechanics, you know, so that should appeal to the fans of TikTok, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I can continue listing examples of some more niche and focused formats. So that's going to be important. And then, as I mentioned, kind of adding a little bit the technology piece, I think scalability will be important very quickly, very quickly. Like if Fortnite would want to do massively NFTs tomorrow, I mean, all of the, most of the existing blockchains would crash. Uh, simply, simply, if tens of millions of people try try to interact simultaneously with the skins or artifacts from Fortnite, I mean, if Facebook comes with Horizon tomorrow, with 2.5 billion people, by the way, that's probably bad, a bad example. Kind of recording what happened today with Facebook. So let's leave Facebook aside. You know, Roblox and tons of other things. You know, where performance will will start mattering. Uh, in six months from now. And then also um, true NFT, again, it's not obvious now, but but I can already see signs and articles of people saying that media has to be part of the NFT. And then you have to be, you have to figure out the, the storage thing because storage on the blockchain is not obvious and can be very expensive. So those are my two small technological additions to the puzzle. Thank you, Alexander, uh, for your technological view. And I believe Oksana and Tupo will share with us sort of hands-on um, experience of uh, representing the uh, business that uh, business or non-profit organization that uh, are not in the crypto world. And would you like to tell us about your journey? How do you select the blockchain? Where to mint? And uh, do you sell it at an auction? The marketplace? What is the how do you approach it, guys? Uh, we see we are not the first example of charity with NFTs. Before that, uh, several people were selling their NFTs for charity. For example, uh, uh, Binance platform NFT for Good is selling NFTs and give all their uh, all the uh, donations uh, to charity. I mean, they have a project like uh, a project like uh, three million trees, uh, and uh, they are spending this money for planting trees in the world. Uh, I know that uh, some people were selling their NFTs and trans and give this money for donation, also for uh, for charity. And uh, our example is just one of examples how also Rotary is uh, involving in the new uh, sphere and new trend. Uh, of NFTs uh, these days. Uh, or what I would like to add is that we see that NFTs is very much like uh, we have a parallel world with uh, original pictures and we see this is very much the same. I mean that uh, when you have some art uh, artworks, they are very difficult to measure. Nobody can measure uh, the difference between the uh, masterpiece and some some new work of some new artist. It depends on the uh, painter, on depends on their market and people who evaluate, the people who evaluate uh, canvas and uh, they uh, think how they can be sold, which amount. I mean that uh, we are just starting, we are observing, we are consumers of this uh, new market and we would like, of course, we expect uh, big amounts of charity uh, on the auctions uh, so that we can spend much money on charity. And we see that uh, there is no difference between our auction offline and our auction with NFTs. It is very much the same. We have auction, we have rising of price, but we can do it online, we can do it internationally, and we can do it for one week. Because when people come to auction, they should buy within one hour or within one week, within one evening. Uh, NFTs help us to make auctions as long as we can. 
and we can raise the price, we can sell uh, more for uh, not our set price, but for our bigger price that can be sold. And it helps, uh, it helps us to be in charity and the opportunity to sell and to get money. One more uh, uh, tool, how to get money from NFTs. And uh, thank you to all the opportunities, this beautiful NFT market. Thanks. Thank you, Oksana. Um, thank you very much. Well, thank you everyone for your insights uh, regarding the um, NFT creation and choosing the marketplace, how to identify its value. Although I want to take a little a step back and uh, we have spoke about a broad application to the digital art and collectibles. And, um, but I want to speak about what actually this technology brings to us as a society. A little note from me, I've, uh, the way I'm looking at it, that we are now at the stage as a humanity, we digitize the world economy, we create our digital twins, everything around us, we build over expanding digital ecosystem of twins. Some call it ecosystem, uh, some call it metaverse, which is now part of our society and economy. The system is um, radic radically transforming our world and Uh, redefining the way we do things and actually changing their humanity. So I would like to ask our panelists to let us know what are the most prospective applications of NFT technology do you see outside the art, art world and how it can impact our society and um, economy. And uh, I would like to uh, start with Bess on this question. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm actually more excited about uh... Uh, potential applications once you go beyond the art world. It, I think the really interesting ones will be in uh, uh, starting now, but especially in the next years where NFTs are just underlying technology for, for new apps will be enabled where you won't even know it's an NFT. I mean, ideally, you won't even need to know what an NFT is. Just like, I don't know much about internet architecture as far as, you know, DNS and why Facebook went down today, but I, I don't have to to use it, and neither do the majority of people. So, more specifically, what I'm thinking is things like uh, uh, concert tickets or or uh, uh, tickets for a football match that uh, are represented by NFTs, but you don't need to know that. You're never even going to interact with it on chain. It's just behind the scenes to to make sure that it, whatever object you're trying to interact with is always authentic, can be easily transacted between other users. And that all happens under the hood. Um, some other things with NFTs that you talked to, uh, that are really interesting is in the play to earn space. Right now, it's still the more obvious um, ways where like in an Axie Infinity, you know you're dealing with NFTs uh, when you're doing it, but I don't think it needs to be that way either. I think that's kind of the most raw first form, but um, different ways that people are thinking of work they're contributing in a digital space that can be kind of like encapsulated in this thing that has value and nft can be can do that for uh all, all types of use cases and i, I think eventually it will evolve beyond us more technical folks uh thinking of this i've got an nft representing this to your everyday use case where it's just uh, well I, it's just natural for me to think that a digital thing i've created has value um now we don't even have to know it's an NFT. It's just it's second nature to me that uh, these things have value in a digital space. And of course, underneath all that will be NFTs, but uh, I'm looking forward to when uh, we won't have to explain what an NFT is to a user for them to get the benefits out of it. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Bess. Thank you. Um, Alexander, what, what do you think? Do, uh, do you want, what do you think about non-R yeah. uh, application of NFTs? I kind of see four broad areas, and Wes mentioned some of them, so I'll be short on those. One is everything that has to do with collecting, and it's not necessarily art. Uh, for example, we have now a case in the community where there is an Italian company which is working on disruption of wine collecting. When, when you buy the wine, you actually buy NFT, and you show everybody your collection in your wallet, and then you move it and sell it as NFT. And only if you want to touch your wine or drink your wine, it leaves actually the physical seller of the manufacturer and you get it. Imagine the savings on logistics, you know, on insurance, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a simple example that collecting goes well beyond the art. The second thing I think Dimitri mentioned that one is everything about kind of moving assets 
and about fractional ownership. Like I'm dreaming to uh, own a painting, you know, we all remember this Picasso painting or, you know, expensive real estate being sold. Uh, NFTs enable that fractional ownership and, and movement in a very seamless manner. You, you know, you can own a piece of anything. Uh, and then programmability kicks in as well into NFT. You can program, you know, anything that you want in the business logic of that NFT. The third area I would mention is, and I think Wes mentioned partially that one, is kind of the whole direct-to-consumer phenomenon with large platforms that used to uh, use intermediaries going direct, you know, with FIFA selling tickets directly to consumers for the World Cup because they're dreaming uh, of stopping resell and they cannot do it in the real world. You know, with NFTs, you can actually uh, prohibit reselling or you can program it with, you know, all of the global brands. I mean, we're, we're re reading that Playboy is going direct to consumer, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there can be multiple, multiple examples of large platforms going direct and, you know, eliminating the whole layers, intermediary layers. The fourth one I would mention is this whole thing of meta metaverses and gaming. I mean, we all, I guess, saw uh, first player ready the movie. I kind of think that it was a pretty decent forecast of what's coming 10 years from now and how uh, the world is going to live and socialize. And then maybe the fifth um, element I can imagine, it's not the phenomenon, it's more like a trend, is merging with other uh, segments, including the blockchain space, for example, DeFi, you know, you can land NFTs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that kind of merging together within the metaverse uh, is, is also something that I think we're going to see a lot of. Thank you. Uh, Dmitry, um, what's your take? I believe you mentioned earlier something about NFT for real estate or, an, or supply chain, or am I mistaken? Right, not only it's not only uh, we can say real estate or supply chain, it's everything is having place and everything what we're talking about, I support Alexander in this point, it's happening right now. Like when it was hot with Axie that time, uh, Ali Group, they launched own NFT collection in uh, Alipay. So some things you cannot see, but I have seen this inside, like I have been in China at that time and I've seen this happening. Right now you can buy NFTs on Taobao. So you can go on Taobao and buy NFTs without owning any kind of um, wallet. And it's happening through the centralized application and people don't know how, what to do with that. Some of them, some of them just own it and holding it. But this is what we experience. We experience in the big, uh, big industries participating in this field and they, they experiment. They do not afraid to experiment and they do not afraid to lose some clients if something goes wrong. So we see that uh, this is what is um, uh, mass adoption is coming from. And this big chunk of users can be bigger than what we have in the crypto. Like we can say regular crypto user we, who, which are using uh, wallets. So this is users without using crypto. That's what you asked to say before, like you use crypto without using crypto. You even don't know that you're a crypto user. So uh, there was art pieces sold on uh, Ali uh, and uh, you can, if you go, oh, if you, it's called Jifubao in China and it's called Alipay. If you open, you can still, you can buy and trade some NFTs over there. And you don't need to download any extra application for that. You just own your, uh, your application and which connected to your ID. Uh, which is not so really fun it's for many people because uh, people don't want to expose their ID, but this is how regulated application works. And uh, I, th I think in the future we will see this more, more kind of, um, you know, separation between communities. Some people use an NFTs as re is regulated in application and they will get support from big media. And then we will see that those uh, kind of Satoshi region NFTs, which are anonymous and which travel in around the world and have this consensus about anonymous uh, transactions and privacy. And this question I think will step to us and, and will be more and more crucial in the future. So um, I think next, um, next 
next generation and next hot topic in in the crypto will be privacy and it will come more and more as far as more and more countries will try to regulate nfts even not nfts but crypto in total so i think usage will come with adoption if better projects can lead to better uh, better better usage and uh, i think uh, in same time it depends on regulation on the countries and do will these projects would like to obey these rules or they would like to just to hide and go uh, anonymous like we see many many projects right now so uh, yeah i think all usage cases have in place whatever you want to sell a chair or you want to sell a house it's just an object in um, object in the in a crypto will be nft which object bound to to some coins it can be fractionalized it can be sold by one piece or it can be lent to another people so it's just uh, technology but the usage use use cases can be different thank you Thank you, Dmitry. Thank you very much. Well, um, to be honest, I don't think there is much to add uh, to, just to the fact that NFT in itself, it's not just a token that would represent the ownership of art, but would actually will be um, the way to digitize any asset and to lock up the, uh, the IP rights uh, to that assets and will be in, intangible and divisible. Uh, thank you, each and every one of you, uh, for this beautiful discussion. I believe we went through different angles looking at the NFT. And uh, again, very grateful for you to join us today. Very grateful to the organizers of Synopsis 2021. Um, I would like to also remind that every speaker and holder of business class ticket of Synopsis 2021 uh, and exclusive ticket and crypto enthusiast ticket will receive a limited edition NFT. And also this year, Synopsis Summit 2021 itself will be released as an NFT and placed at an auction. The buyer will receive the right to perform changes on the official web page of the summit and will have the overall right to all the content of this event. The main organizers of Synopsis 21 are blockchain consulting company Calibre Group and the leading calendar of cryptocurrencies Coindar.org. The co-organizers uh, co are Blockchain Technology and Digital Economy Commission of the Public Organization Investment Russia and Sinopi Group. I thank everyone for joining us today and for sharing your thoughts and insights. It was an absolute pleasure. Great talking to everyone. Thank you. Thank you for moderating. Uh, sure. Appreciate. Would like to talk in the chat in the future, guys. Wish everyone good luck to the project. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's be, let's be connected. Sounds good. Take care, everyone. Bye. Welcome to the Theta Network. Earn T Fuel crypto rewards simply by watching live streams and videos. As you watch and share with others, you're contributing to the decentralized Theta Network all powered by Theta's native blockchain. Discover the future of video delivery at thetanetwork.org. Imagine a lake with clear water and unpolluted air. Imagine a website with real news and no hidden, unlabeled, sponsored articles masquerading as real news. That place exists and it's called Be in Crypto. The first and only cryptocurrency news portal to provide complete transparency and honest news. Pure, relevant, informative. Are you in? We help fund, build, and localize tech startups in the world's most promising regions. Cinefy is a one-stop solution for tech companies trying to make sense of China and Southeast Asia. Check out more at cinefy.group. This planet is at a tipping point. The headlines seem to agree. In fact, it might be the only thing we can agree on.